Oh, thank you. I thought I, I thought I had clicked that on. Well, well, that's that's that. I appreciate that because we've been talking away for ten minutes. All right, thanks. Would you like me to start over? <laughs> okay, thanks. Are we live? Hi. So um, I've been talking away. I've been talking a whole lot of smack. Man, you guys missed out on all the juicy stuff, but it's boring to say it, so I'm not going to say it again. I, uh, you know, part of setting up to do a stream, you want to turn your audio off, so when just the title's up, you're not advertising or, or, or saying inappropriately horrible things, you know. And I reached over and thought I hit the on button, but apparently I didn't. So we have audio now? So we, we've been, it's been silent for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we, we have audio now. Um, well, good morning. That's going to be really rough, because uh, because playback is yeah. Sorry guys. <laughs> and of course, I'm talking to you and 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 trying to do the intro thing, so I'm not really seeing the. And I got my water bottle in the way, and I I don't know. Hey, good morning. <laughs> We're live. We're live. And we have audio now. We have audio now. This, this is one of the benefits of having someone here to actually be a switcher versus trying to do it yourself is right? once you're live and, and here's the fun thing with the way my setup is. I don't have the URL to share to Discord or to my Patreon members that, hey, we're now live until I'm live. <laughs> Technology. Technology. You try. I try. I wasn't recording that, so there's it's, it's just gone. Anyway, sorry guys. Hi, how's it going? Okay. <laughs> well. Jonathan Wiesner, no sound. Your lips move, but I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah, William Connors has it right. Just make up your own word story. <laughs> uh, Nora says, Odin, I'm back. Hey, Felicia. Hi. <clears throat> Mr. Grandland. Uh, hey, Odin and Felicia. I just got my pin in the mail the other day. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So... Everyone who's at ten dollar level or higher with my uh, all of a sudden I've got these big PBS flashbacks. <laughs> Everybody's at ten dollar level will receive a Odin makes enamel pen in the mail to show your support for Odin makes. So get your pen today. Hit that subscribe button. Jump over to Patreon and do it. anyway. Thank you guys. Um, I got a little behind with getting. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got concept ones here that aren't real pens. <laughs> I was like, these used to be pens. Uh, yeah, someone came by and visited. I think Sean Cash did, and he walked out with the last one that was hanging yeah. on the wall. <laughs> That's okay. I've stolen two myself. Oh, so. there you go. But, um, but everyone who's at ten dollar level gets a pen, and I ran very behind with getting some sent out. There's one of you out there that waited longer than I care to admit online to receive your pen. Now uh, Joe has has decided he's going to help out with all the shipping of stuff. Uh, he's also shipping out all the eBay um, uh, stuff that's being sold on eBay, the eBay stuff. So he's doing the post office run every Friday. So at this point, every Friday, uh, Patreon rewards will go out. Yay, so help. yeah, hey, help! So Miranda, thank you very much. Huge shout out, thank you to Miranda who joined at at her own custom fifteen dollar level. And um, you will also be getting a brand new pen and a sticker. I'm pretty sure you've already got a set. Um, but, um, you know, those might get special delivered to you. So uh, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. And as a heads up, we are seriously looking at not revamping, but adding to and maybe slightly modifying um, the current Patreon levels. The slight modification will be how things are arranged with your names appearing at the end of the video. That's the only modification to any existing level. But we want to add a couple of other levels in, and as well as some um, milestone rewards for those of you who have been with us for a while. Cool. Yeah. Are there going to be any special stickers? Because I heard that's a thing now. Uh, yes. Of all, special stickers is, is, is a very good possibility. I've talked about it, but uh, right now we're looking at doing more non-tangible things. No, no, no. The, 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 the stickers in the chats. Oh, like in the chats. Like custom stickers in chats. I've, I've mentioned this, that's... that we need to get going on this, you know, and that'll happen eventually. eventually. <laughs> that's one of my favorite superheroes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, um... I brought stuff. Oh, cool. Jerry Reprop says, sweet, that's a great idea. Cool, thank you. And Felicia brought stuff. So I could only find one Wonder Woman earring, so we're going to have to make Wonder Woman's earrings. Okay, so 
we're making Wonder Woman's earrings. That's that that's easy enough. Right. Right. I mean, worst case scenario, we go buy a pair of like doll's eyes and spray paint them red. I'm an evil doll eye. <laughs> hey, this is Bumble Scorpion. So yes, Bumble Scorpion will be making an appearance uh, with this week's Mecha Godzilla feet video. It's real short. Actually, the video overall became really short, which is fun. I hear a knock. Come on in. Which is fun um, because I spent an extra amount of time trying to get it done. You'll you'll see it in the video, but like the first day, day and a half that I was working, I completely what's the right word? Screwed the pooch and uh, made things the wrong size, so I ended up having to kind of redo everything at the last minute. Sorry. That's I'm all right. right. I just saw that uh, this got smudged on the drive over. I didn't cover it. I just saw it. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> right. So, so her dress form got smudged on the way over because we're going to need the dress form to make Wonder Woman's breastplate. Yeah. But anyway, um, so even though I spent an extra amount of time and, and a mad dash at the very end to get Wonder Woman uh, uh, Mecha Godzilla feet finished, the video's not that long, <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> I know. Sometimes you do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Uh-huh. And... Yeah. I, I got 10 hours of the Lost World audiobook listened to. <laughs> so it took some time. Yeah. So, um, Kara did walk into uh, the studio. I don't know if she's really prepared to be on screen yet. That's totally cool if she's not. But if you happen to see a blonde person walk by the camera, because I've pushed it, the camera back so there's no longer space to walk behind it, just know that that's Kara and it's not a huge deal. <laughs> so, even though Kara is not currently present in the Discord, she is 100% present in the studio. <laughs> Yay, we have a live studio audience today. We have a live studio audience today. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love it. Is one, one ear more appropriate to put it on than the other? Well, I mean, it's like a Hawaiian flower. I put it on one ear and, and I'm looking to be engaged. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to wear this wrong. <laughs> I could put it in my nose, but that might be yeah. icky. <laughs> Yeah, that's a clip on. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's actually got a little threaded screw in the back. So yeah, I've, those things are painful. They can be. I don't have it at a painful level yet. Yeah, even still, it just being there in the same spot for too long. Yeah, that makes sense. Honestly, I prefer sticky dots. You had said that before. And you also were saying that on shoots, they lasted, like, not only all day, but came off during lunch and restuck. Yes, because we love to have crazy earrings. And as much as I could is I would hang them from the wigs. So that right. the weight wasn't pulling on the actor's ears, right. cause ouch. Especially Ian and Anthony didn't have pierced ears, so we could never like poke them. <laughs> right. But when having, I, having put earrings in without pierced ears, that does suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I had to do the big giant Xanax earrings for the Miss Frizzle costume. Right. We just used um, sticky dots. Okay. And those held all day comfortably. I was going to get the pinchy ones and glue them to that, but those were uncomfortable and they were very painful. But the sticky right. dots held all day. Took them off for lunch, put them back on afterwards. Same sticky dots. Very cool. So, so do you remember the title of the Miss Frizzle episode? Because I remember that was actually... Really funny. <laughs> really funny and had had a fantastic wardrobe and we built some fun sets and props for it. Yeah, that was one of my more favorite ones we worked on. Uh, Miss Frizzle. What was this is, it? This, this is a... Smosh Magic School Bus? Wait. Yeah, that sounds like it might be it. Like... You could probably look up Smosh Miss Frizzle or Smosh Magic Fool School Bus and find it. So how would you describe Miss Frizzle? Because it's it's post-series Miss Frizzle, so she's even a little bit older in, in, in the Smosh oh, episode I... as a character. So she was, like, to me, having, like, this midlife breakdown, crisis, crazy, um, psycho, psychotic event. Right. <laughs> so I, you know, how her dress always kind of matches what the theme of the episode should be. Right. The pattern would change to fit, yeah. Yeah. I feel like she used to make it out of like craft supplies herself at home every day before she'd show up to class. So I made angry uteruses. <laughs> <laughs> Seems very appropriate. And? With Xanax and mar margaritas. Margaritas or martinis? Martini. Or martini glasses. Martini, martini glasses. glasses. glasses, right. Because yeah. those were a little more her style, in my opinion. Sure. And it's, and it's easy recognizable as being a particular drink. Yeah. yeah. So, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It was way cool. I... <laughs> I remember telling Ryan about doing her dress crazy like that because in his head he was just like, well, why don't you just get like stars or something all over her dress? Right. And I'm going, but I want to put like angry uteruses on her dress. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, get it. She's, yeah. draw me a picture. <laughs> so I drew him a picture. Right. And, and I got the okay. And he just went, it's the Chicago Bulls. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I had 
had them angry, so instead of having the ovaries out, I had them in, just kind of, because oh, okay. in my head I was making them oh, right. angry. The angry face as much as you yeah. could. Okay, cool. But it didn't end up translating well, so they ended up just being... All right. But <laughs> that was, I was so glad they just let me. Yes. <laughs> that was a great dress. should not dress. have, but I love that they did. It was a great and, dress. <laughs> but yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is it starting to... No, I'm just done. Yeah. <laughs> and I probably should have loosened it before I pulled it off. <laughs> right. But see that shape? Yeah. That is totally a button. You're right. Yeah. And I was saying hemisphere. We talked to the phone earlier, uh, like Wednesday when we were wearing pink. And um, one of the things you didn't hear us talk about us, how we're color coordinated today. We're both wearing blue. And then we made a joke, or she made a joke about how Wednesdays we wear pink. Yeah, they totally didn't hear anything. No, they didn't hear any of that. No. Yeah, all the best show was while the mute button was on. So everything's just downhill from here. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the ride. <laughs> right. Uh, Jack of all trades, or Nora, yells out, Kara! <laughs> Jerry Rig Prop says, if I was there, you couldn't keep me off the screen. And Kara says, me neither. Not Kara. Kara is saying me neither. But uh, Nora says, me neither. <laughs> and Jerry Rig Prox is crying, saying, oh, come on, Kara. Uh, say hi to us. I said hi in the chat. <laughs> oh, you did say hi in the chat. <laughs> Cara's making her own breastplate as well, which Joe helped paint a little bit yesterday. Quite impressive. Mr. Grandland says, out of all the props, Odin, out of all the props in your shop, which one is the most powerful? To answer this as literally as I can... I'm probably going to say the gravity gun because that's running on a 12 volt battery. The Leviathan axe is also running on a 12 volt battery. So those two are likely the most powerful. Everything else is 5 volt or 3 volt. <laughs> I don't think I have anything that actually legit just plugs in and stays plugged in. No. <laughs> I want to move this. It keeps rattling. You're right. Interesting way to think about that question. <laughs> Now I'm like, how much power output does that have? Right, how much power does that have? How much does that have? Like, yeah, no, it's all, everything's battery powered because I want to walk around with it. Most of it is powered off of a couple of AA batteries. Uh, recently, I uh, Miss, Miss Minutes, who hangs in the wall, runs off a 9-volt battery uh, with, with the reduction circuit on it. And then tied into the 9-volt battery are two AA batteries, which equals 3 volts. So she's still only 12 volt. So 12 volts still the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think, uh... None of your flashlights? I don't think so. Um, because the, the beam saber and the lightsaber run off of, uh, 3.7 volt, um... They can't see any of these. I know, things right? when you look around. <laughs> uh, run off of rechargeable batteries or, or just three double A's, which is only four and a half volts. Um... <clears throat> Even the Rick and Morty portal gun is only running off of like six volts. Yeah, huh? twelve volts. Probably the most powerful prop I've got. <laughs> and Detlef P says, if Zemo starts to dance, there's no chance for other props. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say the Infinity Gauntlet because I was thinking it could snap everything going, but yeah, pretty much. That's that, that, that's that's a much better yeah. <laughs> my brain was going. Right, which is the most powerful in-universe. Yeah. It'd be Infinity Gauntlet. Out of all universes that you have? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Iron Man's or... Yeah, I, either of the Infinity Gauntlets. Either of them? Yeah, well, one's both... not stronger than the other? No, because ultimately when you build them right, you're just at the will of the user. Okay. So, I don't think the prop itself... Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the prop itself is any power more powerful. It's just the power of the will of the user. Makes sense to me. No, nope, even that gun's only six volt. <laughs> I think um, I forgot the aluminum foil in my car. I've got aluminum foil in here. Not aluminum foil, the aluminum pans. Those are, I do not have in here. I got some, they're in my car. Okay. So I have to go get those. That's fine. We're waiting for J period to show up. Who said he's going to stop at Starbucks? Uh, I mean, who said he's going to stop at duct tape coffee? So. <laughs> one of the various one of, one of the various things, yeah. You know, if I had duct tape coffee on time this morning, maybe I would remember to hit go on, on the, feel free to go get the stuff we need. 
Yeah, because yeah. I feel like we need that. We also talked about the phone. Right. Oh, and did we get a final count? You know, this isn't going to fit me. <laughs> well, uh, no, I never did get a final count, but... I know that as of Wednesday, it was obvious uh, which one we were going with. And then yesterday, when we were all working in the shop, it also became a quick thing of, yeah, we don't even need to count. It's pretty obvious which one is, is, is the preferred one. Okay. <laughs> and the Trash Panda yells out, duct tape coffee! <laughs> I can't do Trash Panda's Australian accent. Oh, did you bring it in? Is that it? I think I need some duct tape coffee. She brought them in. They were here. Yeah, she needs duct tape coffee. Now, she didn't totally wipe out all the virgin blood that's left over in this thing from the last sacrifice that she used them with, but that's okay. Is that what I said? <laughs> it's just a little drip. Oh, that's not what I saw at all. It's just red tape. Okay. <laughs> Look, duct tape coffee's here. <laughs> not quite duct tape coffee yet. Yeah, not, coffee. All right. Well, yes, we, we, need, we need to greet the labels and cover up the mermaid mega duct tape coffee. <laughs> But more people are here. We got J period. We have J periods, almost very significant other, and uh, and Kara Skywalker. Almost. Well, I was going to say that it also makes it sound like you're you're actually married, and I don't think you really are quite yet. Kara <laughs> no, tried. tried. She's bright red right now. She's bright red right now. Oh, okay. Well, I apologize. Yeah, that's yours. Okay. No pressure. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the horrible, ugly aunt. You know. <laughs> So you got a panel, shut up. It's okay, no worries. Okay. I got aluminum foil. I'm not sure this is going to work, but it was the heaviest aluminum foil pan that they had out of all the pie plates that didn't have super ridges. That's good. Because ridges are strong. Yes. But I don't want to use but them. But we'd have to flatten them out. Exactly. Right. So why did you bring a highly reflective uh, heavy oh, yeah. gauge aluminum foil pan? No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I thought that it would be good to have a flat wire inside of the W because it is one of her random accessories. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And we are going to make it fit multiple people shapes and sizes, so I wanted to, the oh, W to be slightly flexible. And oh, okay. I thought that having a wire inside yeah. would help with that, but I didn't want the bulge of um, a wire underneath, sandwiched between foam. Right, because we just, exactly, when you put... Yeah, the, the princess and the pea. It totally happens with foam. You get you get the little bumps under the foam. So yeah, so I figured if we cut strips, we could glue those in with the W lines and in give order. us a little bit more hold. Hold and bends. conformity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a thought. It's a good thought. <laughs> well, we'll see if it works. Okay. But. Magic hands. Magic hand. Thank you, Thing. Oh, giving them a little this is what happens when you mess up an order. That's fine. That's all right. No I did, worries. but that's I okay. Multiples. It's just the accessories we're doing. I feel like you could put it with anything. These were a couple options. You were showing off. <laughs> oh, Odin was oh, showing off. I was showing off one of the options, just saying yeah. that it probably wouldn't fit me. Wonder Woman top <laughs> options. Wonder Woman top options. Just because, you know, we reference where, how big, and... Right. Let's, let's, let's not get tea on that one. <laughs> oh, yes. They're still spilled. I thought it got yeah, all Yeah, I got my and... duct tape chai tea that I'm drinking here. And then just, like, high-waisted. High oh, nice. Totally. So, these are just random pieces that I figured we could put together with any of the accessories. Right. Did I order the stars? Did you? I thought I did. We talked about stars. We did. And I thought I ordered them, but now they're not here, so... But we're not working on them this week. Okay. Well, we good. have some time. Yeah, no, this week is the breastplate. Janice Uzra says, duct tape coffee? Virgin sacrifices? Am I in the right stream? <laughs> Never. <laughs> there are no virgin sacrifices that will be appearing within this stream. What we do in our downtime is our own business. Mm -hmm. I think we'd get demonetized. We get demonized? What? <laughs> there you go. All hail the algorithm. Yes, all hail the al hail algorithm. <laughs> so. Uh, Mr. Grandland says, how about a dancing bumble scorpion? Possibly in reference to uh, Wednesday's video, which you guys actually might get late tomorrow. Yes, yes, please. Okay. But uh, We're bumble scorpions are armor I'll today, so yes. yes. Hi. Okay, hi. I have. Hi, who are you? I'm Kara Skywalker. Oh, hey everyone, it's Kara Skywalker. <laughs> Hello. 
That's crazy. No, I'll, I'll take on the box. Oh, too. yes. Well, <laughs> uh, your heads. <laughs> Headroom. Yeah. Headroom. All right, these are my boobs. Oh, these are your boobs. Oh, okay. Are you trying to like? Where's the camera? Can you? The camera? camera. The camera's up there. Oh, not that one. Okay. Like, well, I can turn well, on this one, but on the uh, but the focal point is uh, way back here. Because it's not a cell phone camera. It doesn't autofocus. So you need to come up up here. <laughs> Yeah. And, and if you want to, you want to move it down behind the table Look. a little bit, because I, I can adjust the camera, but it'll move around seasick. <laughs> okay. And then it's there's on one on that you. side over there. Will that help? Which one's actually showing? Here. The right only one showing is program. So oh. the the, oh. one, the one that says I'm program doing it right wrong. there, You're that right. corner I'm sorry. is whatever we're seeing. <laughs> we all learned things today. And now. And now it's that camera over there. <laughs> now he's just messing with you. <laughs> no, because I thought I was I was I was going to old habits. No, it is right. Is this how we YouTube and then you read the thing? Don't worry, we're live. Yeah, totally. I got Ulu yeah. Kara. Oh, hi, it's, it's my the partner. Only portion. We're good. Hi, Squib. <laughs> <laughs> she has me on the giant TV at home, so. Oh, that's that awesome. That is awesome. Hello. <laughs> and and Squib totally kind of like saved yeah, yeah. the stream the stream because. I love um, this gold. Oh, Jay, can you grab my crown? Yeah. Because uh, I was just going off and I had had to turn the mic on so nobody could hear anything. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got the messages and calls. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I love this gold. It's my favorite gold. Is it that I one? Mean, yeah, it's the it's uh, the one you've probably used to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And actually, this is around. this is the uh, the plaid antique gold. It's a slightly different oh, really? gold thing. Yeah. This is a. It's really. Yeah. So this isn't this isn't oh, the mask the one that I typically grab. mask pretty awesome. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Which one is it again? It's now now, now we're looking at one. that one out there. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have tally lights. <laughs> we're gonna make this wearable and then I'll pop back on at like 1:45. Cool, sure. Okay. I've got a staple gun if you need it. <laughs> elastic. <laughs> that right might there. that might be a better yeah, we've choice. Got elastic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, bye, Jack of all trades yells out, Jay! Yes, Jay period is here as well. <laughs> Jay's 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 Hey, everybody, let me see where I'm uh, we're, we're looking at the that one. one right yeah, there. Yeah, that one out there. Yeah, with my duct tape coffee Duct as well. tape coffee. But yeah, so we were working on that last weekend. We got a little painting done on it yesterday. Help, right. Joe helped us out with the, the plastic dip on that one, too. Same with the crown and the breastplate. So now... Uh, I think today we're going to try to uh, finish the back part so it can actually be worn. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you were sh you guys were sharing a lot of work in progress pictures on Discord with us. We did, yeah. So uh, basically the entire portion of that build went up on the work in progress page of Odin's Discord. So uh, that's where we shared all of that. And uh, yeah, we'll, as we continue finishing the Sylvie build, we're also doing a bunch of other Loki builds, trying to get them done Silicon Sack anime time. So... I will put, we'll post more whips in the in the Discord as we finish those along because still gotta make uh, the collar devices. We're gonna use uh, SKS props uh, templates for that, and then also make a couple swords. One using your template. Sweet. Yeah. That's cool. So is this a group cosplay? This is a group. Right now we're at uh, five Loki variants that are gonna be together. <laughs> you want in? Six if you six if you count the uh, Loki Gator. Uh, alligator Loki, awesome. we'll have one of those as well, so, so we're going to have a stuffed Alligator Loki, got to make a crown for, for, for look, that's the sixth variant, and I think, uh, yeah. Now, with the variant Lokis, it's pretty open, right, from what we can see? I mean, it's not, it's maybe not entirely anything goes, but it's pretty close to anything uh, I, goes. I, I, I will say, if you have seen the TV show, everything's canon. Everything's canon, everything's right. Everything's canon. Right, but, but that... You have to remember during group costumes, if you wander away from the group, will you be recognizable? <laughs> will you be recognizable? <laughs> so, you know, things to keep in the back of your head. Right. But also sometimes it's like, no, I'm not dressed up, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait. Wait, you are dressed up. You are dressed up. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. So that's uh that's So we could like put a Loki crown on Wonder Woman and let me would it be uh, Wonder Loki? I believe, Loki I, woman? believe I believe that's part of the uh, the Amalgam verse. The Amalgam verse. And that totally okay. works. Okay. I mean, there is a Captain America with a Superman Superman crest shield as part of the Amalgam verse from I think they did it in the nineties. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. I yeah, don't... I, I, that was after I was at the comic shop because I remember an earlier one where there was the crossover with Superman and Spider Man doing something, and yeah, it wasn't very flattering for either one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see Superman, and Spider Man. That just, that no, just pretty, doesn't melt. No, really? I, I might be, I might have yeah. it wrong, but I think that's what it was. It was because it was this like Avengers fighting the Justice League Superman in the cover or something. And <laughs> he scares me just I mean, a little bit. Superman in recent media, because everyone likes to lean towards dark Superman. I can see where that can be scary. Because I like 
him and you want to like him, but then that evil little grin. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just that little bit of scary. So uh, we're, we're getting chimes in from the East Coast, letting us know that, that both Nora and Will actually prefer blue painter's tape coffee, that it's, it's, it's a bit milder and much nicer than duct tape coffee. As long as it's greeked. <laughs> uh, it's really the, it's, the duct tape helps the caffeine stick to your bones and keep you going. There you go, stronger. yes. And something else to, to realize is duct tape coffee. Um, there are many different brands that produce duct tape coffee. It's just the delivery is typically done with duct tape. So it, it, it's, it's not it super specific. It to wet surfaces when there's condensation. Yes. <laughs> and paper tape does not. And paper tape does not. But it does to paper cups. And I was reading that apparently the current manufacturer of duct tape coffee has over 2,000 locations in California, which is twice as high as the next. Texas has 1,000. And then everyone else is like 800 or less. <laughs> I feel like if there's one, one down the next exit, where am I? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, do, uh, we thrifted wait. something for you. Yes. Oh, cool, yes. Okay, okay, here we go. The complete first season of Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, and it has the best box art I've ever seen. And... Oh my goodness. Do we have a close-up cam right here? Can we figure out the cameras? Let's <laughs> figure out the cameras, maybe. I suppose I need to do it's a close-up cam. I'll you try not to photos. make it bounce around too much. We do. Although, we haven't announced the winner, but... But it's that one. <laughs> that's what should be. But it's that one. It should be, right? Uh, that's what I voted for. The interesting thing about Wonder Woman's armor is that it protects all the organs. You know? Yeah, pretty much. Her, she has her rib cage, which is pretty strong, and the belt covers all those. She's, she's just a little bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> but also. No, I know. But. Yeah, and then open up the inside part. I wanted too. to, but I was like. So close up. <laughs> oh, sweet. Jerry Reed Props is telling me that in Ireland there's actually electrical tape coffee from a company called Costa. <laughs> <laughs> we have Wonder oh, cool. Woman art. Yeah, and then there's a oh, wow. One too, and then and we got reference photos. Okay, look, and there's the W, and you've got the, the silver bracelets with the red stars. Yeah, and the earrings. Are they not these ones? Just because we're on the close up oh, camera. Yeah, no, they totally are. I can oh, you're, only you're find one this morning, and I was late looking for it. <laughs> so we have to make new ones, but... Oh, look it, she has the stars. And then... Is there more? Yes, because it's not even hole. fully opened. When you open it all the way up, you get this whole thing. Oh, wow, there's a... There's like a big fold-out of... Of Wonder Woman. Of Wonder Woman! Everywhere. I have to pop off the CDs for the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> DVD, sorry. DVDs, discs. <laughs> We bought it for the art. The, the, the episodes are each. <laughs> now you have a DVD player, right, Felicia? I have an <laughs> Xbox. Oh, that's a DVD player. What, was hand modeling in the job description? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. I love it. Yeah, that's the whole transformation throughout the season. And then this is the right. version we're going to do. We just announced it. <laughs> I like how you're saying that this is the transformation throughout the season, but Not the season. Linda Carter never has the WW breastplate. It's always the eagle, isn't it? You know? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's cool. It's okay. It's okay. It is. I'll it's totally okay. Now. No, you're fine. <laughs> right. I'm going to close this up. We should probably put it. <laughs> Somewhere safe. Somewhere safe. Yes, put it back together. <laughs> that is really cool. That is really awesome. I was kind of binging on some Wonder Woman, but I went for Netflix, and they have this teen show of if all the superheroes were teenage girls. Oh, the DC superheroes oh. one? That one's adorable. I loved it, and oh my gosh, did Wonder Woman beat Barbie to be the captain of the gymnastics team by doing a vault routine. <laughs> so... I just was geeking out on it. It was too much fun this week. I just so. noticed while you're putting it away, the center of each of the discs is red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> they really took that theme to the whole... And Princess Squib asks, All right, who's photoshopping Felicia into the Wonder Woman box art? <laughs> Raise your hand. Give me ten minutes. <laughs> And, and Nora had said, Cara could! <laughs> All right. 
right. <laughs> So we briefly talked about how we were going to... Oh, do I need to go in the other room and wheel in the theater seats? No. The theater <laughs> seats. <laughs> I know. They missed so much in that like brief five-minute conversation. Because <laughs> we actually got three people in, 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 as, as members of this live studio audience. Well, I had a friend that was running a local movie theater at the Sunrise Mall. And during that time is when they were redesigning the theaters to add more... Seating for for those who have to be in wheelchairs, right? So they had to take a few of the rows out and a few chairs out from the sides of the theaters It was the oldest theater seats in the area. So no other theater wanted spares for it So my, my manager friend actually had to call in a dumpster and they were just chucking them in the dumpster So he calls me up and says hey, oh and guess what's going on? So I drove down to the mall and started putting theater seats in the back of my truck <laughs> Are those the same? Those are the same red theater seats that was in Pat's garage. I originally made them for John Christensen like 20 years. Actually, I made them for play. And then they ended up on Smosh Games. They ended up on Smosh Games. And then they ended up back here. They ended up back here. Yes, those are the same ones. I built. I put those together. Uh, all that happened during the re-release of the special editions of Star Wars when my friend was saying, yeah, we're going to, if I can't get a stereo system, I'm going to run an ad saying, yeah, brand new special editions of Star Wars. Hear it like you did in 1977 in mono. And all of a sudden he got a hand-me-down stereo system for his theater. <laughs> but those are the same ones. I built them, yeah, I built them for Play TV. And they bounced around amazingly, and now they're back in the building again. <laughs> right? They will not leave you. No. <laughs> I love how they've been around, and they're semi-famous. Yeah. And the couch uh, bounced around quite a bit, too. Remember the, the couch that Ryan hated that had the red sweat way back? Uh -huh. Yeah, that was the Kiki at Midnight couch on her show at Play TV. Yeah. Because the... I hated that couch. I hated that couch. The Play guys <laughs> love that couch. So <laughs> they bought it brand new from some high end, you know, it's got a funky sweat because it was a, it was the nineties and so everything that wasn't square eighties design was great and new. <laughs> right. Right. So theater chairs. <laughs> since this is a show that sometimes contains trains, but there's no train camp today because it's too damn hot outside, let's try to get back on track. <laughs> How long have you been holding it? <laughs> that, it that just hit me now. <laughs> like moments before setup. <laughs> I don't want to derail this conversation. Oh, anymore. that's good. Sweet. All right, let's work on some steam and figure out what's going on here. <laughs> okay, so we need a double, a double you because seventy-five percent of every poll voted for the W. And 25% of people wanted the eagle. Okay. I that maths like, out. <laughs> I feel like W is so classic, but eagles for those people who really just like the... Like the good golden age Linda Carter look. Have more imagination. Have, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just biased. <laughs> I am on the eagle, team right. eagle. <laughs> They're both very cool. I was only team W because it seemed like it might be easier. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. So, we're noon. It's time to go public. Oh, let's go public! And then we can get started. Everybody, we're going to have our public offering, and it's time for the Odinate's live stream to go public. Okay. Um. Oh, my gosh. What's that? There were 3,000 votes. There were 3,000 votes. I don't know 3,000 people. <laughs> there were th I'm here from J. Period. There were 3,000 votes, and 75% of them were wrong? <laughs> <laughs> places you could vote it was very consistent of 75% of people wanted the W and 25% of people wanted the Eagle yeah so W it is W it is so what <laughs> so what are we doing with the West Virginia logo on Wonder Woman yeah we need to get a West Virginia Tech or whatever that so we haven't patterned it yet we haven't even no, we've been talking for 45 minutes. We've had the audio on for 35 minutes. We have friends joining us in the audience today. Hi, we have friends joining us to the stream in general. Uh, we just clicked over to, to uh, live and public. Um, so we are brought to you live to yeah. the global audience. To the global audience. And we have a studio audience today. Although as I look over here, it goes, we're talking to all eight. Somebody just dropped out. But uh, I was going to say nine, and I look over and it's eight. It's like, oh, well, all right. <laughs> So what are 
are we doing today? Uh, we're looking at Janice Uzer says, I think somebody spiked their duct tape coffee. And then Princess Squib chimes in, yeah, they use Bailey's instead of creamer. Um, One could hope. Maybe. <laughs> What are we doing today? Well, we had a poll that was open to everyone that we posted in a few different places asking which type of uh, Wonder Woman emblem did you want to see on the top that we're going to be making today for the Wonder Woman live stream costume. And overall, 75% voted for the W. So we're doing the WW uh, top. The you, double W. The double W. And uh, you even had a, a comic at one point you sent to me when, when in the comics her logo changes. Yes. Yes. So. Which I, I gave that to you. I don't know if it ended up on I the. Yeah, as I talk about it, I realize I didn't really. You didn't shift it I over to where you over. can share with them. Yeah, well, if you want to stall, I can try, but. Okay, I stall. But, Guess uh, what I got? <coughs> I can stall. There you go. Wonder Start. Woman artwork. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We got examples of W's and Eagles on here, and I love it. And they totally can't see it because of the glare. But right, well here, let's do that. Was that gonna help you? There's a good good shot of your waist. There we go. Is that, ah, is that there's too the camera. Close? <laughs> so we got Wonder Woman from her DVD box art set. And we are going to be doing the W today. Are you gonna be able to share it with them? Try. The comic? Okay. Still Open stalling. A new tab. Oh, got Wonder Woman. This is not what I wanted. I just wanted so this is the classic version things. that we're gonna go with going forward. We have the gold tiara with the red star. We have Hold on, where's the best picture? There's so many good ones. All right. We are live. Sorry to make you see sick. We have the silver cuffs. And now this week we are going to do the W breastplate. And then next week we're probably going to continue on that. And then after that we're going to do the golden belt. And it's going to be there. detached as opposed to attached. If it was the eagle, it would be attached but with the W, it's detached. All right, I'm going. And I went through all that to save it, and the, it's not the switcher work. doesn't like PNGs. That's really weird. It's not going to let you show oh, it? Oh, there it is. Oh, there you go. There we are. I stalled long enough. You did. Once again, showing, Sorry, showing the benefit of having uh, an actual person here who's switching. Sorry, they're out today because of the Olympics. That's, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not complaining, by the way. No, I know. Just, I just thought I'm it just... was an interesting reason, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin Flynn says, hi, Odin, 33rd viewer. Yeah, we're at the 38 viewers now. Yay! It is rapidly climbing. Hi, uh, Kevin. Kevin. Hi, Kevin Flynn. You, you know, Kevin Flynn owns a 80s-style uh, arcade and, and, and could very quite very <laughs> get digitized and brought into the computer. Do they look like pathways? Do they look like circuits? <laughs> J period gets it. <laughs> it's the it's the caffeine and Bailey's kicking in. That's okay. I was like, wait, do I know him? Is this like the guy who has the one bar down it? This is Tron. Yeah. <laughs> They're still looking at the comic. Okay. And that's my tummy. Hi. It's like you want a real show or something. It's not a real show. We're just live on the internet. Oh, that's for, true enough. Uh, Blitzbrub. Hi, Odin. I did the Captain America shield and it was awesome. Sweet. Glad to hear it. Nice. Uh, Daniel Esteban. Uh, uh, I can't pronounce the rest without really sounding like an a-hole. Uh, just says, hello, hello. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, Stephen Deitchi says, um, uh, good evening from the UK. Hello. And we've got, uh, the Rooster Man has arrived. Ghostface says, hi, Odin. You are the best. Um... I love hearing where everybody's from. Yeah, it's it is crazy. really cool. Hello, Odin and Felicia. <laughs> Ross is here dropping in. So guess what, everybody out in public land, everyone who didn't see the first 45 minutes of uh, live stream, or the 35 minutes of live stream with audio. It's pretty um, rough. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a rough morning. We've got a live studio audience. We've got, we've got people here with us. People who are typically in the chat are going to be right here trying to be able to cat call us and let us know when we're doing something wrong, like not having the audio on. Hey, do you guys want to pop on and say hi to, like, everyone in the world? Not really? Too okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll jump on. All right, come on. Okay. Which camera are we on right we're, now? We're, we're back on the main camera. Right? Hey. Yeah, so, you know, uh, hi. Jay. Jay, period. And uh, we were here in the shop just kind of hanging out during this live stream and doing a little bit of work. Um, if you were 
watching this later, you can rewind a little bit and see because we showed off some, uh, we're working on some Loki variant stuff uh, this weekend, uh, trying to get that ready in the next month or so. So working on Sylvie's breastplate, uh, Sylvie's crown, TVA collars, all that fun stuff. Very cool. Yeah. So Jay Period is typically in the chat and is a Patreon member and often is uh, appearing on the Discord. Yeah, so yeah, we've been putting all that stuff into Odin's Discord and the WIP channel, so we'll be continuing to do that as we finish that up. I'm trying to finish all those projects here in the next month. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like it's going to be fun. It should, that's, that's the point. <laughs> that's the yeah, point. Right. Hopefully, hopefully it is. <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to do it ahead of time so it's not that last three days and it's... Not fun. Well, here's the what's question. What's that ahead of time thing? Yeah, that, that, what, that, what does that mean? Planning. <laughs> planning. Planning. <laughs> plans. How long does it take you to get ready for Halloween? Who does when it? do you get started with that one? I, I don't want. I, I got, we make all these cosplay props and costumes, and Halloween comes, and like I don't want to wear it out there. No, it's I know. It's too nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say because you know there's like. There's a time frame that you got to get prepped for, the, but you only do it for the cons, not for Halloween. Only do it for the cons. For, for Halloween, it's just like, uh, what do I have that I don't care if it gets wrecked? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. You get to have a better time like that. Yeah, or you don't have to worry about everyone else who's out having a great time. Right, because you don't <laughs> right. want to put your props down. <laughs> exactly. And I would not carry right. a prop around Halloween, because that's, uh, that's asking for trouble. Right, and, and yeah, if you go somewhere public, that's just... There's, there's a whole different view of uh, uh, con safe when you go somewhere. There public. is. <laughs> you, you know, when, you, when you hand a prop off to a stranger, you never know what they're going to try to do with it. Right. right. <laughs> yes. uh, I know for me, uh, Halloween was the biggest day of the year for many, many years. And then I started doing Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I was able to do Halloween every weekend. And then Halloween wasn't quite as important. Um, yeah. The Guar costumes happened, and then, yeah, Smosh and Con, and I... Halloween is just an excuse to set up a cotton candy machine out, out on the sidewalk and that do cotton fun. candy for people walking by. Well, it's, <laughs> it's almost August, and that's when people start asking me. Like, but right. I do costumes. So yeah. I start, people start coming to me with their, I want to do this for Halloween, and so I start getting my questions. Oh, hey, we, we've got a Loki variant uh, uh, jacket that's actually cut extremely <laughs> long. Is there a, would you mind hemming that up during the live stream? <laughs> <laughs> Throw it up. It is. It, it, it's, it's probably longer than your dress. Here, I'll, I'll just hand it. Kara <laughs> does not trust her throwing arms. This is how you break cameras. <laughs> well, yeah. Or monitors. Yeah, or this monitors. is probably longer than your dress. <laughs> how long do you need it shortened to? <laughs> it, is. it is just about the same length as your dress. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, put the belt on it. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> that's not going to train over you're good to that. Yeah. It's a Felicia variant. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys need it shortened, waist length, uh, cropped, or pocket length. Pocket. Top of the pockets or bottom of the pockets? We might need to pull up a picture of. Uh, I need reference photos. Of, of, uh, right? Wow, uh, Mobius. All of a sudden, I couldn't remember. Yeah, because uh, on me it goes down mid thigh, uh, which is way too long. Which it's is like, way too long for jackets. Uh, yeah. I, may, I think Tom Hilson's about uh, six inches taller than me. That might do it. And so... It probably only needs to be... The bottom of the pocket is the, the pocket. shortest that you can do without having to, like, destroy Destroy the pocket. Yeah. 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 That's probably what it needs to be, because then it puts it at the bottom of my pocket. Yeah. Yeah, that actually looks a lot better, because that's... It's about a six-inch difference. I know you Which guys no can't see anything, see. because it's just a table. Here. And we're all here we're all staring down at yeah. the this, this is where a jacket should fit. <laughs> this yeah, is where the jacket fits. It's now well below the table. <laughs> it's like this wrong in every way trench coat. It's close. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not quite a trench coat. It's not quite a jacket. It's right. Like, Somewhere between, and the shoulders fit you great. Yeah. <laughs> Can I see the jacket? Off oh, now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I swear we'll get to a breastplate here sometime. Yeah, I swear we will. I was actually just making Eventually. a joke about, you know, she does costumes, so let's just throw something Yeah, no, it's the, hallow it's the time of the year. That's okay. People may actually be interested in, in, in how to do something like this if you wanted to just sort of speak your, your, your thought process through it. Okay, first of all, I would... Camera four? Yep, camera four. And we'll turn the picture in picture on so they can see us too. Okay, so we want to shorten it to the bottom of the pocket right here because this is a solid piece that we don't really want to um, mess with. Right. That's my phone, pretty, sorry. That's okay, I'm not looking it's at this not on this silent. it's pretty dark. <laughs> it is really dark, but. I don't, I don't think I can change it, can I? 
if you look at how this is lined and you see how this isn't flat, there's this little overhang, that is um, about an inch of positive ease. Anyways, I would cut the outside fabric with your seam allowance to where you want it. The under fabric, I would leave it longer than you wanted. <laughs> okay? And then I would fold up the pieces that you'd want and I would leave that extra piece folded. So you'd have to leave this longer than. Yeah. It's really harder to say than it is to do. <laughs> well, it's nice that you're saying this because I normally work with foam and uh, when, when people who normally work with foam and don't sew try to sew stuff, it's usually um, cut, glue, done. <laughs> cut, glue, done? Okay, you want yeah. to do it that simply? <laughs> then just fold it up to where you want it. And then you can just whip stitch it all the way up. And then you'd be done. Then you'd be done. Then you'd be done. Right. You could even do a to top stitch here to, to make it not be, to flatten it, right? You, just... you could just iron it. Oh, you yeah. do that, yeah, okay. Iron it, the better you iron it, <laughs> the crisper, nicer it'll look. And you can, so what you've got to do is make sure that you, see how you have the seam allowance right here? Yeah. Attach it to the seam allowance up here. And then you know this is going to hang straight of grain, and this is going to hang straight of grain, and you don't get this wobble. You don't get these wobbly. Which I would totally do. So yeah, the, I probably would. If you want to add volume to the base of a car garment, you do it off grain so that it never quite lays flat. You want it to lay flat, you make sure your grain lines are nice and straight. So I know foam doesn't have grain lines. No, it's fine. No, but it. safety pin it right to the. Um, the seam allowance. It's then you know it's in the right spot. It's a built-in registration mark, okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then if it's too see much, because see how this doesn't That's quite right. gather, this is a bigger space than this. Yeah. <clears throat> Where if you just started here, you'd probably end up like that and yeah. be off. If you line up that line right here, and you line up this line right here, you can just baste it in right here, and it'll lay nice on this side, especially if you use a nice hot iron and press it. That's the important side. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now. No one ever looks inside of a prop. Yeah, and you could do it with safety pins, so it doesn't even have to be permanent if you didn't want it to be. And if you really wanted to, you could add a top stitch, but that's going to, you need to lengthen your stitch length because now you're going through bulk. Yeah. And it'll, you know what I'm talking about, where it just kind of perforates it and does a bunch of teeny tiny stitches. Okay. It, so make the stitch length as long as you possibly can so you have a more of a top stitch line. Yeah. And then you could give it that finishing touch, but you don't even have to do that. I just... <laughs> so yeah, you can, do, you can do it professionally or you can do it quick. Well, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's like for camera. Who's going to see it? <laughs> Well, what do you, uh, what do you well, say? Well, we're, we're on two. And, Done oh, is yeah. better than perfect. Done is better than perfect sometimes. Oh, yeah. Well... I remember telling Keegan when he, you were helping him build that car, the phone oh, car. Right. We had to Barbie music video, making a foam car that has to be functional and there's this spot that you can't quite. It, it was just a stand-in fantastical car that was roughly based off the Mach 5 from Speed Racer. Made and out of foam. Nice. Made out of foam. Single drivers, it's a single driver seat that was a office chair because it was just the hood and fenders of the car is all it was. It was just barely enough. You could put rear projection behind it and pretend it's a car. Yeah, <laughs> fine. If it works. You yeah. know, but there's a point where it's like, okay, you've been fidgeting, fidgeting, fidgeting. Yeah. And now we we're, cameras are up. Right. We're out of time. It's time to go. Yeah. We're on to duct tape and prayers. <laughs> that hap that's, yeah, that happens a lot. Hey, have you ever read any of the duct tape and prayers with doing a cosplay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's relatable. I have, I have I have a hot glue, a foam vest back together while wearing it. Okay. <laughs> I have stapled my hem to go to a wedding. I was staples not, are my favorite. I was just attending. <laughs> yeah. No, that one's a great one. Staples are like sewing without having to sew. I staple things all the time. Okay. Or the the pricing guns, price tagging. Yes. Yeah. That is the best for tool. I had a friend. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, who was so excited when he found that he could buy one of those guns. This is the '90s, early 2000s. He got one online. Just the same thing. Mm -hmm. So then he would go out, buy the clothes he wanted, he'd cut the tags off, set them aside, wear what he wanted to wear, put all the tags back on if he didn't like it, and then take it back to the store. <laughs> I had a friend who did that. I just, I was too lazy. Right. I more used it as a um, temporary, like, 
I had to make an Adam and Eve costume and I needed to attach Eve's leaves all over her dress. Tagging gun. Yep. It looked amazing. You know what I mean? It would. Especially so, with leaves, yeah. yeah. Like, sometimes it's just, you know what? It looks right. Yep. <laughs> you know? It looks right. So, yeah, safety pins right on the seam lines. It's going to give you the cleanest look. If you want it to be, like, finished, sew it with a length. Increase your st stitch length so it doesn't eat it. That's what I recommend. There you go. Hope that helped. And that's sewing tips with Felicia. And a huge shout out to Princess Squib, who's been answering questions in the chat. Thank you very much, Princess. I appreciate that. Yes, because we haven't been paying attention to it and we haven't been building our W, but we've been having fun. Been having a lot of fun, though. Um, Colby Herman says, What's up to everybody? I hope everybody's having a good day and go good with that Wonder Woman suit. So Foxum Armor, good day, sirs and madams. Uh, people of the internet, I, like I might get to go to a Ren Fair in October with my friend, and I'm super excited. That's awesome, Foxum. I love Ren Fairs. Yeah. I love dressing people up for Ren Fairs. If you're really nervous and don't want to talk to people, dress like a royal. Nobody will approach you. <laughs> right. If you want to have a lot of fun, dress like a peasant. They have more fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is weird. Holly Stutchman comes up. Hey, hey Odin, uh, you have a question. Do I know how long Ghostface's knife is? I don't. I would have to double check who Ghostface is. The name is familiar, but it's not coming to me at the moment. But Princess Squib already answered it. Oh, Ghostface, right. That is a uh, from Scream. Fair enough. <laughs> Duh. Um, uh, if, if, if you scroll up in the chat, Princess Squib answered it, even to saying what type of hunter's knife it is, and it's approximately eight inches, if I remember what she said. There it is. It's a modified Buck 120, which is a common 8-inch hunting knife. Everybody, you can trust Princess Squib in the chat because she's been cosplaying a while. So it's it's all good. More friends? More friends! More friends. <laughs> we need to get a W. We need to get a W. <laughs> hey, it's, it's now 12.30. Let's actually get started on what we should have been getting started on an hour ago. But I've been having fun. And this isn't going to take yeah, two episodes. And this is... Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> At this point? At this point, it's totally going to It's totally going to take Okay. Yeah. All right, all right. So we had a poll. The poll definitely, without even having to do a count, it was a, one, it was a w, w by a landslide. You brought uh, some some tins from the dollar store, some bake, baking, disposable baking pan tins, because it's heavy-duty aluminum. It's the heaviest I could find without having the ridges to make it more rigid. Right. Yeah, I use my finger now. That's fine. But... It's only square baking plates because they had the flatter surface, but we'll see if we can, what we can do. I just cool. wanted to make strips for a flat wire. Right. This is to help the W conform to the top and yeah. hold its shape. Because when we had mentioned talking about making this W, you had mentioned doing, using a layer of what the foam, mm -hmm. um, a layer of flat wire this is flat wire yeah this is a flat wire and then a layer of the softer foam so that we don't have two tough foams right count trying to not trying bend. To counter it yeah because I was concerned that if there's enough spring even with the two layers of foam that uh, without going into more heavy duty aluminum I think she's right this will be fine it would it would uh, spring back and not keep its shape that was yeah. my concern yeah so I got the heaviest I could find. It still seems pretty lightweight that we could. I think it'll work just fine. And I was going to bring a pair of crappy scissors, but I didn't, so we're going to use whatever crappy so scissors. So my crappy scissors, I've got, I've, got, I've got a whole pegboard full of crappy scissors. <laughs> I brought you the floral ones. We can destroy those ones yeah, if you wanted to. Uh, whichever, they're fine. There's a couple over there. They'll, they'll be fine. Right, but um, All right. we need the artwork. We need a W to kind of start basing things off of. And All then right. I brought in a dress form to work off of. Right. So where did you, real, real quick, if you'd like to explain, where did you get this fantastic dress form that seems to be exactly your size? So, I am working on coming out with another video where oh, I built this dress. Yet? No, it's not out. It comes oh. out in August. Sorry. Oh, well, that's only uh, two weeks. No, yeah. Next, yeah. Okay, that's good. It's coming up. It's, <laughs> it's filmed. It's in the editing chair. I just haven't edited it yet. But I built this using foam, and it cost me $20 to build this thing from scratch. Foam, cover, and stand all included. So if you guys want to see how I did this, that's going to be my August video. But I brought this one here so we could have a form to build our um, 
W off of. Okay. And I figured we could put one of these um, leotards on her so that we have a reference of where we wanted everything. That would be, oh, that would make a lot of sense. And then we could put the flat piece of paper onto the dress form and then kind of pinch it to where it needs to be to conform. Okay. And then we cut those darts out of it and reshape the lines and then okay. cut the W apart. Okay. Do you want to do the aluminum foil duct tape or do you, rather, do you want to uh, fold the paper? I'm cold either way. I don't usually do the paper, but that sounds great. I just was thinking that I wanted to start with the actual logo, <laughs> the most that I could, and I just wanted oh, okay. to see what it would take to take a flat W and curve it into the shape because I don't think it's going to take that much. Okay. Normally I would do duct tape, and right. I did just do one of those, <laughs> but... We okay. We totally, can try it. To we no, to, we let's can. let's do the paper. Let's do the paper. So okay. you want me to print a W out? Please. Okay, I can do that. Hey, and also really quick. Hi, Sean Carr. <laughs> so let's do a quick a Google search for uh, Wonder Woman WW. Wonder Woman's WW. Hmm. <clears throat> Images. Question is, which one should I put on the dress form for reference? Right. So if I make All right. So that's interesting because my mental image of the WW it always had two lines. I guess that's more the West Virginia. Why don't you thing. look up her? Oh wait, we have. So because reference. We have. We have tangible reference. Tangible reference photos. And it's three lines. Oh, no, all that right. That my mental image is wrong. What right? This what is, a shock. <laughs> this is why I always double check because I know there's the way I see it in my head and then there's the way it really is. And sometimes the way I see it in my head is more correct. And I know that sounds wrong, but it's like the flavor of the costume or the spirit of the character is what you're kind of giving off versus the exact replica. That's but... Often, it's just look it up. I have to go based off a reference photo. Ooh, that one's a good one. So I'm gonna download this one. <clears throat> oh, I found, tape. I found a nice uh, uh, outlined version. Okay, so wait. I'm not printing out, you know, a mile of black toner. <laughs> so, save image as. So under open 16 one. inches. Because from armpit to armpit, it is. I would do 13 and a half inches, so it needs to be smaller than this. So 16 inches? No, 13. 13. 13. So still or slightly smaller. larger than a, than a sheet of paper. You know what? Let's do it as a sheet of paper size and see how that turns out. Okay. Because it's not from armpit to armpit, but it and we is. Can just, well, it's see. also the. Uh, do the. Use your words, Owen. Do the, the wings extend, or are they. Yeah, well, it's art. We have some wiggle room. Uh, I don't want to do that one. What am I? Wow. I... Wonder Woman logo, 1982 to present is what this says. There you go. Print. Dell laser printer, that's what I want. Says I'm having a printer problem. Is there not ink? I mean paper? Uh, it's more the computer is complaining about not connecting to it. Oh. Does it need to be turned on? It says ready on here. Okay. It might the cable might have gotten pulled loose. I don't know how to fix that. That's cool. Sorry. Sorry. That's you. Yep. <laughs> I tried. You did. <laughs> Now I'm going to leave this out. I keep referencing this picture. Okay. Do we have the rest of our accessories? Because we haven't pulled those out yet. We haven't. They're on the table over here next to Jay. Oh, okay. Are they? Yeah. They're in the box with the saying, aren't they? Oh, okay. I'm always afraid I'm going to say it wrong. Because <laughs> I just start... That's a Yeah. Oh, my... I do like it. I think it looks good. This is weird because I printed like my script yesterday. 
I think maybe it's just the, the program. Did you try turning it off and on again? Actually, I did not try that one specifically. Yes. Yes, there are four. I was Googling when you made these last week, so I have no idea how we ended up with four. <laughs> well, because we made two out of what the foam, and we made two out of regular craft foam, because the regular craft foam likes to do this curve better, and the what the foam, see how this one's nice and floppy? Yeah. And this one's really stiff? This one does not want to hold that curve and really fights back. Nice. So, yeah. And because I was gluing last weekend when you did the live stream, uh, there's this great PSA. I had my respirator on, so I was safe. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Oh, I also came up with a solution for our um, Wonder Woman cuffs. Okay. Because it does still pull right at the weak spot on the Velcro, and it makes that little weird point because that Velcro isn't very strong. If we use this lovely, strong, what the foam that doesn't want to curve, and we put it as the backing for this piece of Velcro inside of there, I think it'll make it so that it doesn't pull the other way. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. So, that was what I thought of over the weekend or over the week. Did you figure it out yet? Maybe. Getting there. I think these turned out really good. Look at that's our aluminum foil versus this. That is not bad. Can you put camera four on? I can't put camera four on. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here playing at the computer. Which no is worries. Just I just was the being most impressed exciting thing I can possibly do. With how much our Wonder Woman cuffs oh, look that. like our metal pan here. And it makes me happy. But yay. Print? Yeah, the other programmers didn't like it. And then I printed it, you know, 13 high instead of uh, realize you're stuck on reflecting. No worries. I was just having fun with shiny objects. That's good. Okay, there should be one more printing. All right. As I suddenly realized, I do have an art program. I installed Inkscape, which will let me resize it to what I want. <laughs> but then I, at first, uh, resize like H. Oh, that's horizontal. No, H is high. So uh, that was the wrong size. Thank you. <laughs> well, we only need half. Right, but... I'm getting it. I'm getting it curved to just beyond the seam of the cup. Cup on this side. Well, the center front would be right here. Right. I guess it's not being matched out. Yeah. No. That's totally. That's that's nailing it. That's. Is this the right side? Well, doesn't it? Here, you, you do it for your size. You put the the, the peak of the W in the center where it goes. And it goes to just right, almost to the edge. Almost to the edge of the cup. And that's you about where it is on her reference photo. See? Just right yeah. at the edge of the cup. Cool. So. I'm going to make a center front line. All right. Do uh tape? No. <laughs> no. No tape. <laughs> I did not grab tape. I grabbed oh, okay. a ruler. That's fine. I knew you didn't grab the tape. I was just like, oh, I want the tape because I'm. Gonna use the monitor uh, like a light table to help me line the um, images up. It's like you've done that before. Uh, you know, yeah, on occasion. That's why I like having a glass table as my crafting table. Yeah. I like to glue directly, <laughs> throw my glue or paint directly on my table because it's easy enough to clean off. It would be with the there. Yeah, with the glass, yeah. That would be close enough. I'm a pixel off, but that would be close enough. <laughs> I'm telling. You would. They didn't know anything until you said something. <laughs> Technically, you said something, but I was going to tell. All right, let me click off my art program and back to all of our viewers. Because I'm sure somebody has said something. And we're still crafting and painting happening here in the studio in the background, which I think is pretty darn cool. 
And we've got uh, Schultz Division apparently is is taking off, saying, see you around, Princess Squib. Holy smokes, while I wasn't paying attention, Dead Ender uh, 72 did a $20 super chat? Wow. That's... What do you... What do you thank you. That's really... Well, thank you. Hi, Dead Ender. Uh, do you back, have let me go find... Oh, it was just straight up Dead Ender. You just... Just supporting the channel. Thank you. No, no specific question or anything. That's amazing. Feel supported. I feel very supported. Jorts says shiny and chrome. Right. Rainier, Rainier Hunt a while ago yelled out, "Hello, Odin." Uh, and Nora was right there. Thank you for the donation to Dead Ender. Yes, exactly. Uh, Jack of all trades, by the way, is Nora for everyone. I'm giving away Jack of all trades secret identity. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary's asking if I'm going to make any props from Fear Street. I'll be honest, I haven't seen Fear Street, uh, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, Keith Brockway, I love your shirt, Odin. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love Cookie Kaiju, whatever, whatever his, his name is. Princess Squib is, uh, have a, has the great rest of your stream, guys. I've got to get back to studying. Yes, well, studying's important. Good for you. She's probably not watching right now. Jack says, there are many ways to make a body pillow of myself, but this is how Odin makes. <laughs> Dead Ender uh, just claims out. Dead Ender, which, by the way, has a, a couple of other uh, uh, characters behind it that I absolutely cannot read. But Dead Ender 72 says, I've been loving your videos ever since 2017. Thank you, Dead Ender. Um... Kara Skywalker decided to retract her message. Uh, <laughs> Abby Marshall says, Would you ever consider selling the Rick and Morty portal gun? I love it. I could consider it, maybe. I love it, too. It needs a little TLC. Yeah, it needs a little TLC, exactly. It's dropped off the... Uh, since it's on the wall with other tools, on occasion it's fallen off, and so the, the green tube on the top needs to be re-glued. Um... Mary, Mary Barintes Bar 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 also says I've been watching since 2017. Artman 2019, I am here. Well, hi, Artman 2019. Sean Kennedy says, I'm looking to make and send a pen made from floor mat foam. Fun. That, that could be quite interesting. Uh, Keith is asking, Odin, are you sure this build is going to fit you? Yes. Yes. It's her accessories. It should fit anyone. <laughs> I'm totally going to stress the uh, elastic a little bit. There we go. It's stretchy. I don't reason. quite feel like those videos where they put a whole ton of rubber bands around a watermelon, but it's pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> Request from Mr. Rupert's telling me about the starter prop, uh, the starter mining tool for No Man's Sky. Fox and Murmur. I've done the mathematical arithmetic to find the monetary value required to build my Skyrim armor, and I've come to the conclusion that I need a job. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all work to support our hobbies? Yeah, we all kind of work to support our hobbies. I was going to say, <laughs> once I started getting paid, then I was like, hey, I can craft now. <laughs> right, I can get more, yeah. <laughs> A good job. I can make things. I'm gonna make things all day. Trash Panda says, "Okay, crew, I'm really going now. I've been procrastinating far too long." It's all good, Trash Panda. If even if you have noped out at this point, thank you very much for hanging out for as long as you can. And you know, it's okay. Just let your boss know that you're watching Good Makes, and he'll totally get that that you're late, and it's fine. <laughs> Happy Monday to you, because we're talking to Trash Panda in the future, at least in my future. In about 15 minutes, CJEMM5D will also have to go to work. <laughs> um, William Chadwick, am I thinking about making a Taskmaster face mask? I thought about it off and on for the two years that we were teased with this movie. Um, 
At the moment, I'm not thinking about it. I'm, I've got a couple of things I've really got to get done for the cons that are coming up because I'm going to be doing three cons back to back in just a couple of weeks. I'll be going to uh, Silicon, which is going to be San Jose, about two and a half, three hours from where I'm standing. Very next weekend, I'll be at SAC Anime, which at least is local, and that's a three day con. And then immediately after that, I'm going to have a booth at Stockton Con, which is only about an hour from where I'm standing. Um, so, uh, I need to get Mechagodzilla done. And we're also going to be getting some updates and, and some fixes for the Gundam, who also has yet to appear at a big full con. So those two things need to happen, and I don't think a Taskmaster build is going to happen. because That's, that's going to be a little too involved to get done with those. We're literally going to have an update video of Gundam coming up almost immediately after the next Mechagodzilla video. <laughs> Just to try and give us a chance to get, get our, our stuff done. Do you need help? I'm not really... No worries. I'm just trying to feel, figure the shape out real quick. Okay. Because I cut right here. I'm going to slice right there, which is going to change the shape. But then we'll right. readjust it. Right. Because yes. the thing is, we've got a flat image on a flat piece of paper, but now we're conforming it to a three-dimensional object. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, you're totally going to have to change things. Yeah. And this is why um, when I'm doing my patterns for foam, I'm... I'm wrapping my head cast or wrapping whatever I'm, or, or the skull or whatever I'm working with aluminum foil and duct tape and then try to draw it on freehand. Yeah, I totally did that the other day, but... Yeah, I believe you. You weren't happy with it. No. No, no it's, it's all good. I think I'm going to put a dart right here. Okay. Because... Because ultimately the straight line, so you can kind of cheat it. Yeah. Once, once, you, once you know... And then it'll cut out. <laughs> right. And I'll, I'll turn those curves into it. I just need to figure out where I need to cheat those straight lines. Yeah. I, I, it's good for us to say it again for those of you who are watching us at home, but I actually totally understood when you were saying it. I thought it was a... Yeah. And it also makes sense that this is probably the more common way to do it, not this whole duct tape marker pen thing. No, the duct tape marker pen thing completely works, and I literally did it yesterday. Okay, okay. I made a... Per you know how I make the garbage bags? Right. I was making another garbage bag purse out of an old purse, and so... Right. I completely... I remember seeing the Instagram post on that. Yeah. I thought that was actually an old post. I didn't realize that was something new you were doing. No, I just did it yesterday. Okay. I just was sitting at my table, and I, you know how yeah. you told me i got to stop just not filming things that I make. If you, if, here's one of the fun things. You decided you want to do crafty stuff and make a YouTube channel out of it. And actually, Bill Duran was the first person that I heard about saying this when he was talking to Evil Ted Smith. If you're ever doing something and you're not filming it, you're pretty much wasting your time. <laughs> Because if you're trying to be a content creator, you got to make content. Otherwise, you've just got a social media post. Exactly. Yeah. So I was making this anyways. Right. So I took a picture of it. Awesome. But I did the duct tape shape and thing. And I had the pattern. I could have brought it. But it just... It didn't work. Th but thinking about doing this, this is all I wanted to do. Was just okay. make this sh their straight lines. Right. Are those still straight? Or is it... Uh... Yeah. Look at that. It's a dart. Yeah. Okay. And then I just drew the lines. It's... Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm only doing half the pattern because left and right should be symmetrical. Right. But. Absolutely. I, all the time I only do half the pattern <laughs> because half the pattern is knowing is half the battle. So the pattern is half the, yeah, no, it's not working out. That PSA failed. <laughs> but in today's episode, I was. Uh, working with noxious chemicals and sharp knives and oftentimes I was wearing some sort of safety gear but there was different point in times when I forgot to wear my jock strap so you always want to remember to keep yourself covered and be safe while working with your crafting materials I'm just figuring out my center front and okay then we should be good sweet because see how it's kind of crooked I'm gonna readjust that line too right George is saying out I, I do the W differently on that first corner this no. one I don't know. Um, she may be seeing the same thing that I'm kind of curious about, which is uh, you've got one dart on the W on the right side here, and is that making the W arc down too much instead of remaining straight? Like, would it be better to have a small dart on the top and the bottom so the lines remain parallel to the floor instead of just a dart at the bottom? I just was trying to get that shape to lay flat. Oh, there However you go. However, it naturally <laughs> wanted to lay. I okay. wasn't thinking about. Fair enough. Because I was like, that line's straight. I'm going to true this line. 
Yeah. This W out, I'm going to put actually a straight line right here. And okay. Then true that out. Right. Yeah, because it's not currently trued out. It's, no, I. The center line's way over here. Yeah, I split it so I can just kind of come up a little bit. Oh, yeah. You know? It's. You can see in all the art, it's definitely um, stretched and maneuvered to, to, to fit the body. So I was also adding a little bit of a dart okay. here. I'm going to totally put the cool. tape all. I'm going to. Let me do this real quick, but I'm going to yeah, put yeah, yeah. a tape line straight down that's going to be my center front. Okay. That's not part of this whole thing, and we'll true it out from there. Sean Kennedy is saying, PVC glue in the basement is fun! I'm fine! Please, uh, <laughs> please, please, please take please care of yourself. Please wear a respirator. And uh, apparently people are talking about Batman suits and Batman armor, uh, and the comment that I'm seeing is from CJEMM5D, saying that, uh, in their opinion, the Dark Knight suit would be more fabric than foam, if this is the Frank Miller comic version of Dark yes. Knight, absolutely, um, but uh, the Batman versus Superman armor would be more of Odin's forte. Um, yeah, and I've actually, actually I've seen a few of those. In fact, um, uh, my my friend Mick Thor, the first time I met him, he was wearing the Batman versus Superman uh, foam armor made out of floor mat foam, and it wasn't even painted yet, but it looked great because it was the right dark gray color. Right? <laughs> yeah. Batman is awesome. Yeah. And plus, you only really have to do the front of the costume if you have a good cape. Uh, yes, this is true. That's my plan for Bumble Scorpion. Is I want to get a torn red cape like what Tetsuo has at the end of, a, of Akira and I want to do that on the back of Bumble Scorpion because I don't want to have the Godzilla spines and I don't want to have to put a tail on Bumble Scorpion. Who's Bumble Scorpion? He's the weird character that's appearing in the Mecha Godzilla videos I've been doing who's not related to Mecha Godzilla at all but somehow he's he's there and constantly yelling at the camera so that's, that's what he's doing. <laughs> people in the room to laugh. That makes me happy. Yeah. Uh, means all I should make the Winter Soldier's arm. Yes, I should. I just haven't yet. Uh, Holly's asking me if I ever thought about making a leather face mask. Um, not a bad idea. Halloween is coming up. Um, Bumble Scorpion! Yeah. The, so so in, in the Discord, Nora's been very excited, Jack of all trades, has been very excited about Bumble Scorpion and trying to come up with how to make a Bumble Scorpion motion picture. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that one dimensional character can carry a picture for very long, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know they've, you know, they've, 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 done, they've done more with less. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Radical Jerry is saying, uh, please consider the tool gun from Gmod. That could be cool. Gmod's got some really crazy stuff. Uh, press like if you want to see Odin in the Wonder Woman costume. Thank you, Dead Ender. Um, let's let's keep in mind the body form that the uh, Wonder Woman costume is currently being worked on, and exactly how well that'll fit on Odin. <laughs> it's a I mean, W. It's a W. I mean, it, uh, maybe we'd have, uh, it does unzip all the way in the back, so I guess we could put like, you know. This one has lacing. Clip, clip, clippy straps and stuff in the back of it. This one has lacing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rainier Hunt says, Odin, you inspired me a lot with your videos. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Feel free uh, to share pictures with me on, on social media. Uh, so I, I can see it. At this point, we're trying to put out um, uh, Fan Friday uh, pictures, things that you guys have done. doesn't even have to be specifically uh, a prop that I've done on my channel. Just the fact that, that, that my channel has helped inspire you to build something is really cool and, and honestly more the point. I don't expect everyone to build only what I build. If somebody else gets inspired by something that I did in a video of it, if it unlocks some idea or desire to get something else built, that's that's what I'm after, and that's cool. All right, now um, I'm starting to have to pay attention to the pieces I'm dropping. Okay. So. Jason Manx is asking me, how come I don't use much cardboard in my projects? Uh, because I was never much of a cardboard maker. I would make... Um, like G.I. Joe bases and, and, and I, I would glue uh, cardboard forts to the fireplace at home for my action figures. And that's kind of what I use cardboard for, but once I started working on um, costume pieces, then instead of using cardboard that 
for me, never conformed to the uh, shapes of the body. Uh, I just I did, didn't really use it. I use it for pattern making purposes, but I very quickly was way more interested and enamored with foam, and so that's what I was using. I blame college. Okay. Okay, what have we got? So now when it flattens out, there's these darts that naturally appear. Oh, I see. So that's, that's quite a ways away, unfortunately, but... We took this shape and added curves to it and then cut it flat again. Right. <laughs> and now we have darts of how it's going to curve back into... Curve back into uh, where it's going to go, and you've only separated it on the, uh, the lines of the design. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I get it. So I feel like that's a good place to start. Right, so we want to uh, cut these independently from uh, from like what the foam, or or do you want to just use do you want to use two millimeter foam? Do we want to grab? Uh, I want to do the millimeter? sandwich. You want to do the sandwich. The sandwich. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, the sandwich is a specific prop from uh, Team Fortress too. <laughs> um, but so whatever we need, that will add up to being a good a good size. You know, because sure. we also have to do the belt about the same width too. Okay, well, both of those are four millimeters. If yeah. we do two layers of two millimeter, all of it will appear to be about the same thickness. Works for me. All right. Do you want to use the HD foam? That's a little soft. Do you want to use the what Let's the foam? Let's do the two together. Do two together? Okay. Yeah, with the foam on the outside. Done deal. And then the softer foam on the inside with the aluminum foil. Now, my question is, is I know we could totally get this, like half of it, <laughs> per cake pan. Well, that's what but we then need. it'll give us a center front. Well, we could just glue it in, uh, at the center front, reinforce the center front. I see. You're concerned about Seeming. the center front uh, having a piece of. But we can just overlap it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be fine. Okay. I'm starting to think that we want to flatten the pan out. It's like, nah. It's no, it'll fit work. on this part without yeah. having to do that. So. So. I'm gonna let you trace it onto the foam. Oh, okay, I can do that. Foam's your area of expertise. All right, fine. Yeah. I'll be the foam guy. I need to use your sewing machine before I left. That's why I brought these. <laughs> oh no, that's that's yeah. fine. Are you kidding? You can use the sewing machine during the stream. I'm sure people will be happy. I don't want to get it out yet. I get that too. Sean Carr, Mecha Godzilla in an Adidas tracksuit. Wow. Oh, and you should make a make a Godzilla costume like the one on your shirt, right? <laughs> Cookie Kaiju would be a pretty cool costume. Get a fur cover for the um, make a costume. Get a torn up one so it looks like uh, it's, it's the battle damage version. Well, <laughs> I used to have access to a Cookie Monster mascot head. Oh, there you go. Yeah, dressed up like that. That was fun. I went with Darth Vader and Cookie Monster to a party once. It was fun. Oh, the mixture of the two. So you were Darth Cookie? No, whatever? no, just Darth Vader and Cookie Monster showed up to the same party. Oh, okay. It was fun. You know, yeah. help me. Looks like people are talking away. That's good. I'm reading. I'm reading. Do you want to trade so you can actually talk to the people? And you can actually craft? Yes. Yeah. I'm sure they'd be happy to talk to you. Not that they haven't been, but you can actually talk to them kind of directly now. Okay. I... Jackson makes says, I've been thinking it would be cool for you to make a chug jug from Fortnite. Fortnite is popular, might bring in some views. And then. So it is. The Zach says, Hi Felicia, congrats on making a channel. I'm the 332nd sub. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations on breaking 300. Right. I don't, I don't think I know 300 people in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, and I'm really excited about this video. I have to edit it. Getting there, but it's it'll right. be released in August. But I absolutely love that dress form. It is so easy to transport compared to my other one. Right. And it stands on its own. <laughs> oh wow, we got a super chat from oh, Dead Ender. Another super chat from Dead Ender? Yeah, look at that. To fifty dollars. What? <laughs> yeah. Dude, thank you. Automatically, I say dude if dude is in a dude or dudette. Dude is a generic uh, uh, gender term. So anyway, we are in California. Thank you. <laughs> he says, "I've seen your master anything that was." I've seen you master anything that resembling metal and plastic, just out of EVA foam. But I never anything resemble flesh. Just a thought. 
Uh, the only thing I've really done in the channel that's kind of flesh resembling was the face hugger. I think that's just about the only thing so far. And that was upholstery foam with latex and, um, and, and paint. Yeah. Do you know the secret to making the limbs look realistic? Like those Halloween fake limbs oh, okay. that you get at the store? Right. Adding fingernails and toenails. Yes. <laughs> as soon as you do that and add a little bit of grime in there, it instantly goes to a whole new ick factor. You know what I mean? Yeah, it goes to a whole new ick factor because it doesn't have quite enough ick factor. Now it's ick factor 12, Mr. Sulu. And then you do that, like, top, the stabbing in the hair. <laughs> right. Into this plastic to make it look like... But yes, you can really get into it. But what would it be a good flesh tone... Getting stuff to paint, to paint to look like flesh uh, is really rough because flesh is actually translucent. Yeah. So the way the light is reflecting um, Bye. Bye. is actually, uh, Joe just noped out of here. We're talking about, you know, fingers and grime and he's, he's done. Um, so painting stuff to look like flesh can be quite interesting because of um, um, distractions. No. Yeah. So how, how do you do it? Little we, blue and red lines. It is. There's a lot of little blue and red lines. It's a lot of, of layering of the colors because you gotta you gotta uh, fake it. So you you kind of you can put in dark spots and liver spots and little red spots and you start putting um, sponge painting skin tones on top of it and vary the skin tones a little bit and all that is really what helps a lot with painting something to look like you know. Flesh tones. So. Yeah. How much have I done it? Not a whole lot. I've watched a lot of videos. Yeah, Paula did it a lot. That was her oh, yeah. secret into making things look realistic was just those thin red lines and right. blue lines. You can actually, if you're doing makeup and stage makeup, you can actually get really fine uh, red uh, like threads or filaments yes. and you tap those in on the cheeks and stuff as part of the old age makeup. It makes a big difference. It looks like all the little broken capillaries, yeah. Uh, and you can also mix them in with... Uh, silicon casting to do the same thing but then they're actually mixed into the silicon sorry things started moving like really fast and now i'm trying to catch up where i was well that's fine dead air dead air <laughs> oh jason makes wants to know if you're an amputee because he remembers seeing a fake leg <laughs> right um i am not uh, that is Pat's leg. That is Pat's leg. And Pat is not an amputee either. No, he just happened to find one at a thrift store once and couldn't not buy it. <laughs> and so then I brought out the leg. Uh, we we brought it out for working on the Dragon Ball Z shoes, but I originally grabbed it from 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 Pat because I was doing the Rocket Raccoon gun, and you know if Rocket's gonna make a gun, he's gonna eat that guy's leg as long well as everything else. So. <laughs> and then when we were doing the boots, I needed that guy's leg because there's the. Random leg hanging up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Could not use it, right? Right. Um, Moon Eyes 2K says, new favorite sentence, Ick Factor 12, <laughs> Mr. Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely oh. an old school uh, Star Trek fan, this guy right here. <laughs> Schultz Division. Yeah. Um, wants to know, Felicia, what's the approach on how to get the W to fit? Um, sure. Do you want to talk talk through it again? Yeah, I can explain it one more time. So you, you got the half that has been cut up, right? I took the W and I found my center front and I made my center front, pinned it to the dress form, not through this because this is vinyl and vinyl and leather will always show hold. So it right, vinyl and do not heal. <laughs> so I used paper tape to tape this down and I squished it and darted it until it just laid flat. The W was laid curved, <laughs> but right. on the dress form. And I retaped all of those little curved spots, redrew my lines, but I just recut my lines. I didn't actually draw them because I'm being slightly lazy. Shh. It's okay. And then when it's all done and put back together, where am I? This way. Right, that way. This now way, we this move this way. out of the way. If you come up here and we can cut the camera four. Camera four. Cut. There you go. We ended up with a W that, if you squish it together, has these little kind of darts between where it was a flat shape. And now it should 
these flat pieces, when glued together, will contour to give us a better breastplate shape for Wonder Woman. Oops, do that's, I... that's really close. Maybe I should set my uh, zoom focus assist to not be five times. <laughs> that might, uh, but does that help with uh, a little bit with seeing where the, the breaks feel... are? That's probably just too close. Yeah, because... Yeah. Sorry. I don't have... All I'm doing is using the focus assist of the camera. I don't actually have lenses at zoom. <clears throat> but the showing... And I redrew my center front line because right. now it has a curve in it. <laughs> yeah. Because it's no longer... See, I took a dart out of it. I, yeah, I see that. But that's because we're taking a flat print and conforming it to a, a, a dimensional Curves body. Surface. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. And Sweet. now we're cutting it out of two different layers of two millimeter foam. Yep. I've got the, the first set all, all traced out so I can cut these. I didn't bother to, to flip the parts over because they're just flat. Yeah. So I'm just going to, I'll be cutting these out in just a second. Now, do we want to do exactly the same cuts again on, 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 on the HD foam and then have to uh, just glue the edges together? Or the, do we want to... We will have a center front seam that way. Right. I would rather not have a center front seam if we okay. can, because she doesn't have a center front seam. Right. What I would do is put cut both of these these pieces on the fold because this line is a parallel line and this line is a. Is, okay, so you want me to want me to recut these with those on the, on the fold because if this is the top layer. We can use it as the back layer. It doesn't matter. It's just it's a stronger layer. Okay. The as long as the um, it's not going to affect the texture of the exterior surface. It shouldn't. With the metallic paint, which I don't think it's going it to be an issue no. because can you even tell which one's the what the foam and which one's the cheap foam? They're all, they're all what the foam. No. They're oh, all. between these guys. Yeah, right, that's right. I'm sorry. The ones we ones, did last week was... Yeah, like kids, can you even tell the difference between these two? <laughs> yeah, look at metal. It's foam. But... <laughs> Which one? This one is what the foam? This one is? Craft foam. Craft foam, and you can Which is even softer than HD foam. Yeah. Yeah. So, if it's not going to, those ones are already on the stiffer stuff. It's easier I'm to work. i going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. We've, we've been, no, we've just been on camera four for a little bit. Okay, but, um, Okay. Yeah. Totally. Then I will, uh, the next set, I will definitely get, I'll just trace those now before I forget. Yeah, and then we can trace them on all of the things. And then oh, cut. Trace them on all the things. And that then cut it out of the um, things. Yeah. Okay, let's see what people are saying. This is me not being prepared. Matt, man with a plan. Odin, any recommendations for a good beginner build? I'm moving into a house soon instead of an apartment and would look and would love to start making stuff. What would you recommend as a good beginner build? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm across the room, so uh, I'm a little far away from the mic, but I'm coming back. <laughs> um, honestly, a good beginner build is gonna be as much your opinion as mine. Um, having just moved in and not having access to all the tools that he's, that he's accustomed to, Bill Duran actually did the uh, Captain America Captain America Wakanda shields much the same way that I did, only using some of the materials he had left over from moving and, and a razor knife and, and, and some glue. And his, his shields look great. Um, so... Because the, the Wakanda shields are a lot of really straight cuts, and it's and it's not that difficult of a prop, but it's a really neat prop that people know what the, what it is. Within the channel, I've done both um, Black Widow's uh, wrist gauntlets and uh, Spider-Man's web shooters, both of which also don't require a whole lot of special stuff to do, and are pretty much just flat sheets of craft foam. Uh, but honestly, I mean, I, I can get that you're trying to. Trying to ask, hey, what would be a really good one to do? It's going to be what? What? What do you want to do? One of the most important things in order to work on the the problems that will come up with with giving yourself fun restrictions because projects like that can't be fun to do is how are you going to overcome those problems in order to get what you're inspired to make? So you know, if you want to make the doctor's wristwatch from when he was only a professor at the turn of the century uh, boys' school in London, dude, do that. 
Uh, but you know, it, it's all it's all kind of up to you. Which I'm not trying to throw that back on you. I gave you a couple of examples, but um, I would probably do something that wasn't going to require my Dremel, wasn't going to require a whole lot of curve cuts. I could get it done with it with a straight edge, and I could make a straight edge if I needed to by folding a piece of cardboard, and uh, and and kind of working that way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Something you're passionate about that you'd want to work on that you give enough of a of a crap to get the details the yep. way you like it, and honestly, this is a really good beginner prop. It's yeah a cup with some silver paint to really right. practice making a good chrome finish. You know yeah like even if, even if you don't have access to printing out like we did printing out the uh, um, the pattern to do this like she said. Just get a, a, a small paper cup that, that'll fit around your arm, cut the, the top and the bottom off of it, and you'll get the right arc. And then you just kind of adjust the paper cup to fit you, and then start cutting foam. Yeah. Spider-Man's Web Slingers. Yep. What do you want? That's where you start. At least. Yeah. At, le at least for us. Uh, a big part of, the, of making and a big part of, 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 you know, this as a hobby and whatnot, is the puzzle and the problem solving of getting to getting to that being done yeah. that's a, a big thing that i enjoy right almost to the point that when i was only doing this type of stuff for my own entertainment once i solved those problems i would abandon the project because i kind of lost interest i know i can paint it let's go do another problem <laughs> side quest side quest There's a lot of people. Good. Schultz so Division our, says, appreciate your answer. I'll have to go soon. Sorry to catch you next time. Thank you for everything you do. Sweet. Thank you for joining us, Schultz. Um, uh, man with a plan. Thanks so much. Web shooters definitely are something I've been wanting to do forever. There you go. And that one I know has a, uh, a pattern you can do, and it's only two or three layers. Yeah. And it's, and it's just the, I didn't draw this right. And it's just the um, uh, the basic craft foam, it's easy. Anyway. If you give yourself a straight line first, mm -hmm. and then you line it up to your straight line, and okay. then when you flip it over, you'll have your straight line already to go up to. Does sure. that make sense? That makes sense, yeah. I just, when I flipped it over here, obviously, I, uh, all of a sudden, it wasn't fitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, well, that's a that's a bummer. It's almost like you've done that part before. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All the time. Every day. Um, Sean Kennedy, best beginner is always something you want or need. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. It's it's the the burning desire to to have it or to get it done is one of the best motivators for a beginning project to get done. I learned how to knit because my hobs needed a s scarf and it needed to yeah. be a rib knit because that looked more right than a right. Anyways. But yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And your hobs look great. You brought them on and shared them once. Yeah, he was watering. I don't know. Just get a picture in your head. Right, this is Calvin and Hobbs hobs. And you go, what do I have? What do I need? Right. What am I willing to go get? And then kind of go from there. Because I don't think there's any one right way to do anything. There's a million wrong ways to do it. Right. There's far more wrong ways to do it. But yeah, no, there, there's... there's... Um, I know there's a million wrong ways to make something, but this is how Odin screws it up. Actually, I did. Look at that. <laughs> I'm be drawing this yet again. <laughs> Detlef P is wondering if anyone is having breakups in their stream. So. Oh. Uh, well, that's... That's for any number of reasons. Hi, welcome to Central California where, you know, after 4th of July, we just like to randomly burn parts of our state down. And that could very well be affecting the internet connection. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yes. We've actually got battery backups and redundant safety systems within the, within the building to try and keep our signal going. So typically, when something goes wrong, it's external. So, hope you figure it out. But Sean King says, yeah, I'm getting it too. <laughs> 
I think Jay's agreeing You're, with me that yeah, it's it's burning the state down season. Yep, breakups. So or if I you think step outside there's with a 3D prints. It might melt and warp. Ah uh, yes. Oh, that good. didn't happen, did it? Oh, uh, part of the belt buckle started to pop off. Oh no. <laughs> but but it's also hot enough outside that if we apply enough pressure, it'll, it'll melt, melt back that. together. Right. Okay. PLA is fun like that. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> Gotta smoosh it. Gotta smoosh it. <laughs> smoosh and smoosh. So, frame drops, indeed. These things happen. These things happen. These yeah, things do happen. I, from my point of view right now, I have no idea how to fix that because... Sorry? I don't we're know. We're live? Yeah. We're live. Sorry. I mean, I, I, I have a dedicated encoding system sending the signal out. Curse says, nice shirt, Odin. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Curse. Curse. I was going to say Curtis, and I was going to realize. Curse the worst. No, that's from... Um, Curses. No. Recess. Ah, yes. Um, the Hogan's Heroes remake. Yeah. It's 3.06 in the morning here in Indonesia. That's Marculus... Oh. Marcellius Adia... Adida? Well, Sorry. Well, thank you for name? staying up this late. Right? Mar Good morning. Good morning. It is one in the afternoon here in, here in California. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, for, for you, it's still Sunday here. Um, I don't know my username says, Hey Odin, any <laughs> hints about upcoming projects? It's okay, I don't know my username either. <laughs> uh, yes, this Wednesday's video is going to be Mecha Feet. And I've shared a picture with the Odin Makes Discord already. And, um... The video will probably be done on Monday, so the members of, of Odin Makes Patreon, Odin Makes Discord will be able to see the video as early as you know Monday evening. Oh wow! Yeah, Super which is quite early, early for, for for me. Um, so yeah, do a do a mecha feat, and then because con season's coming up, I know I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream, but hey, it's been an hour, so welcome to the Odin Makes live stream. Hi, I'm Odin, and this is my co-host. Hi, I'm Felicia. And we both got YouTube channels showing you how we like to make costumes and cosplay props. But uh, I was talking about an upcoming video, and that's um, we're gonna be I'm gonna be working with Joe to update the Gundam a little bit, get get a couple things fixed, fix the eyes, uh, fix some of the joints because there's three back-to-back -back cons coming up. So the very last weekend of August, I'm gonna be in San Jose doing Silicon. This is Adam Savage's new con that that he's running. Then uh, the first weekend in September, I'll be doing SAC Anime. That's a three-day con here in Sacramento, California, where the Odin Bay Studios is currently sitting. And then the weekend after that, I'll be going to Stockton Con, where I know I'll have my own booth having a Ooh. lot of stuff uh, on display. And I may only have a booth at Stockton Con. I'm doing panels at Silicon. I'm stomping around as Mecha Godzilla, and, and, and Joe will be doing a Gundam at, at SAC Anime, and then a booth. So each one's a little bit different. But cons happen on Sunday. So you want to keep in mind that there isn't going to be a full live stream with me and Felicia on those days because I'm going to be on the road. But I will try to get some sort of short stream going at noon every day. So, yay! That sounds exciting. So what's coming up? That's what's coming up. <laughs> Jack of all trades says, Smooshing Prince is my job. Smooshing Prince. As, as well as we're looking at doing a Minecraft build because we're going to be setting up a Minecraft server uh, for the Odin Makes Patreon. So... Yay, new Discord. things. New things. We've actually got the server started, but we're getting the we're getting the details worked out. But that's that's definitely happening too. Yes. Fox Armorer says. <laughs> what does the Fox Armorer say? <laughs> do, 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 do. No, all right, never mind. Odin, any tips on making broken horns? I'm planning planning on making the iron helmet from Skyrim. Ooh, we had that at Smush. You had that at Smush. Yeah. Jackie made that for you guys, yeah, right? Yeah, she did an yeah. amazing job with those horns. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, she did. Um, one day, but I'm not a fan of horned helmets, but I want, to, want it to look like damage instead of just removing them. Ooh, Fair it. enough. Um, the big thing is, okay, find a broken bone. And, mm -hmm. and a big part of what you're going to want to do is... Um, yeah, but this isn't really broken. This is for, just removed from the animal. No, I know, but I'm saying the edge. They call me Tim. But I was more talking about if he's doing broken horns. Right. You well, these these aren't 
this is the, what the broken looks like. You know, you'd kind of, yeah, when, when, it, when it's been removed from the skull. But if it's broken up here, it just it's going to look like the end of the bone when, when Toby's chewing on it. Where it's it just looks pretty hollow, pretty... It's it's hollow a lot, but there's a... Um, there, there, you can, oftentimes with a broken bone, I see a lot of like end grain is the way to put it. Yeah. Uh, to help show that, that it's that it's broken. So if you're looking at, you know, a, a femur or something else, you know, the, the a bone that a dog's been chewing on or, or however it is you come across bones, I don't suggest using your little brother. Um, then, um, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> then uh, definitely just taking a, a fine bit on your Dremel and just doing a lot of pokey things into it to make it look like that broken end grain. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite broken wood. Bones tend to be hollow because even solid bones have the, um, what's it called? Marrow. Marrow. The bone marrow spot. So, and bones are very pithy. And so yeah. when you want something to look more realistic, go for texture. More texture, the better. Add little pin pokes to get that pith. Stab yep. it. But think about it because it's kind of a hollow bone to get like yeah. the shape in there and then... Yeah, remember, biologically speaking, bones are alive and porous. Yes. So you're going to see all that. And then they have cracks and grain lines, and those fine lines, when they get dirt in them, just make it look more organic and natural. So those really, like, fine hair-like lines. So kind of go crazy on texture. The more mm -hmm. texture you can add, the better it'll look. And splintered, yep. so jagged. And also I find that... More is not too much sometimes when it comes to texture because you can start adding things and just the more you add it, that pattern repeats itself. And so you can kind of get a little more than you think. And then because a lot of times it's less is more. But if you a really want to do a broken, broken, it's, it's OK to break it, you know? Right. I don't know. Hope that helps. But make sure that you kind of reference actual broken bones and add the pith. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to get the believable spongy texture. And you don't want to be bone. referencing broken bones like medically speaking because if you're doing a, no, a helmet, you're not looking for a fresh break, you're looking it's, for a bone that's been chewed on, a bone that's, you know, it's yeah, been snapped. It's been a snapped. dry bone that's yeah. been cracked. Yeah. And also what about using like an actual spongy um sponge foam itself and then soaking it in kind of a resin or a cement of some sort totally and just work. getting your spongy texture that way. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of ways to do it, but yeah. texture. No, yeah, you you, you totally tear, tear that up and even just five minute epoxy to, to, to give it a, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, Vira Kapani, sorry, Vera Kapani says, I'm a new viewer. Hey, Vera. I love your work. Hello from India. Hello in oh, India. Hello. That's awesome. Um, Strict Aphid says, hey guys. Hey Strict Aphid. Hey Strict Aphid. Um, Undefined says, Odin, ever consider making this spud gun from Scrap Mechanic? Um, sure. I haven't made a spud gun. I'm actually not familiar with Scrap Mechanic. So something Googleable. Something Googleable, which actually happens often. I, I end up Googling a lot of things. Crust what? Yeah, that's what I'm good. Oh, okay. Sorry. Crusty Juggler UK says Hellboy is a good example of a of broken horns. Yes, Hellboy is a good example of broken horns. Yeah. And yeah, uh, there you go. You want a good example of broken horns? Um, English muffin. The inside of a cut English muffin. <laughs> well, I was thinking of Hellboy. They, they really go some deep gashes and cuts and yeah. add those textures. So it's they a broken do. bone. Break it. Love it. And now everybody's talking about tacos. Tacos. Jerk and Rosa says you can use plaster and sponge as well. Yeah, I like that idea too. Yeah, totally. Because... Bones are sponges. <laughs> Bones are spongy, yeah. Very hard sponges, but they are technically little sponges. Um, Holly Stutchman says, Oh, Felicia, the shoes are almost done. In September, I will send them. That's awesome. Awesome. I love custom shoes, and I love building them in another life. <laughs> in another life. <laughs> no, no. Like, I love shoes. Um... 
Thomas Hughes TV. Odin, could you make the Master Laser Screwdriver or the Time Lord Fob watch from Series 3 of Doctor Who? <laughs> I think I talked about the Time Lord Fob watch a little bit earlier ago. Uh, yeah, I, I totally could. I haven't done a whole lot of Doctor Who props. Uh, I am absolutely a Doctor Who fan. Um, and I've watched most of them. Because <laughs> um, I'm an old school fan. I started watching when PBS was running Tom Baker back in the early 80s. Um, yeah, totally good. That one's one of those when things slow down? or Right. When the, That's one of those when things slow down when... when um, I've only, I mean, I didn't do the, the most iconic, fantastic of all Doctor Who props, but it didn't get really encouraging numbers to make more Doctor Who stuff. Yeah. Did that make sense? That happened both with Ami uh, and my channel that I had. So I don't think about Doctor Who a whole lot. Uh, you know, I made the TARDIS out of Lego, but uh, I, I did make the fourth Doctor's uh, yeah. Sonic screwdriver. But yeah. Yeah. So keep showing interest in Maybe it'll right. get back on the radar. Exactly. Um, Jack I'm says, definitely guys, not going to outright say no, that's for sure. Because okay, you want to. You want a reason to. I want a reason to do it. I'm not, I'm not looking for a reason to say no. No, no, yeah. that's what I say. Oh, okay. That you want an excuse to make the screwdrivers. Right. And numbers. <laughs> and, and numbers... Yes, when you're doing YouTube as a way of making sure you can pay your bills, you're really kind of picky over what you're going to do. <laughs> right? Things that don't get demonetized. Don't get demonetized. Things that only get a couple of hundred views when you need tens of thousands. Yeah. <laughs> what do we say? Um, Jack says, guys, have you seen Odin and Spider-Man in the same room? I haven't. I'm getting suspicious at this point. <laughs> You know, getting into the Spider-Man suit and slimming down that much to look like that, it is the worst pair of Spanx to get into ever. <laughs> <sighs> ah, gotta really zip it up. Yep. Metal zippers. Metal zippers. Um, Do Laugh says, Just wanted to tell you how much I love the great work. I've been watching you for a long time now, and I'm absolutely in love with your content. Keep it thank up, guys. You. Well wishes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Do Laugh. Duloff, thank you very much. Yes. Um. I'm just sitting here cutting foam. Fox Armor says, that's really useful. Thanks, guys. Sweet. Yay. I know. I like doing really organic. You did the really good bones on that last project. Yes, thank you. I'm real happy with how the, the skull turned out. I love the amount of texture. I feel like that really sells it, where I'm like, wait, is that bone or is that bone? <laughs> uh, that was a comment I got from Professor Mojave when he first saw the pictures. It's like, I thought you cast it. <laughs> the texture. Yeah. The texture. <laughs> oh, Sean Kennedy, I had a pen blow up on the lathe. How do you deal with frustration when things go sideways? Oftentimes, small things go airborne. Um... <laughs> It depends on where I'm at. It depends on, on, on my headspace. If I'm overly caffeinated, it can get really, really difficult for me to calm down my frustrations. Uh, anymore, I laugh at myself a lot. As I've gotten older, I've gotten more comfortable and able to just laugh at myself and what happened and how absurd or unexpected it was. And that does a lot for calming myself down. But there's days that I just have to turn the cameras off and walk the F away. So it just it's situational. I walk away. Because I find that if I'm in that funky mood and things just start going bad, they will continue to go bad because right. it's my mood that's funking things up. And so often I walk away and I come back with a better mood because it gives me a chance to breathe, reassess the situation without like forcing it more and making it worse because sometimes just stopping is better than ripping something out. Although now I have a job where I can't just not work on it. I have deadlines and I have to get it done and there's no just walking away. So I walk away, get a cup of coffee, take a sip, calm down and come back and know that it's my attitude. And if I check it, <laughs> things will go better. If I don't check it, it's just going to go downhill. Yep. <laughs> but you don't, when you work as a creative, you don't get to decide I don't want to be creative today. 
Right. And oftentimes it's hard to decide, I'm going to be creative today. There's days that, that you can't force that. <laughs> Except for that's my job to do anyways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get it. Oftentimes, like when I was uh, editing on a deadline, editing every day for a job, um, when I just wouldn't or just couldn't or just wasn't into it, I would go to things that I could do because I knew how to do it instead of being inspired to do it. Yeah. And the act of starting would get things going. Yes. Yeah, it could take up to half an hour, but I, oh, I get in a groove and I'm doing it, and that would work. There are definitely tasks where they're mind-numbingly dull and you can do them in your sleep. And if you can get those tasks done while you're in that funky mood to give you a chance to think about the problems that you've hit, do those mind-numbingly dull tasks during that time. <laughs> yeah, and just enjoy the task for the technique of what you're doing. Don't don't take your frustrated brain and go, this is the mind-numbing dull part. Yeah. <laughs> that helps yes we all hit those walls all and the time there are Quite different sorry. motivators <laughs> there you go whether it's like i'm getting paid to do this or i want this done by this and this con right so and deadlines are actually a beautiful thing uh actually adam savage is talking about that at one point deadlines can be scary deadlines can uh be frustrating but honestly projects get done because of deadlines so even if you're creating an artificial deadline for yourself just as a challenge, do it. Because I had a garage full of unfinished projects that had no deadlines. Done is better than perfect. <laughs> I tell myself that all the time and sometimes I go, really? You really should do things better, but you know what? It's done. It's done. It's done. And I've moved on. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> is that a new bubble scorpion mask? <laughs> That's my Working new bubble. Out. Yes. It's my new slim bubble scorpion mask. Summer wear. Sacramento swimwear. This is Sacramento swimwear. Oh my goodness. Cause I once did a show where I was the art director and we were doing this country look and this one girl kept bringing in dresses that she wanted to wear that didn't work and the only way I could describe them was a Sacramento club wear. And wow. it gave it the exact... For a country? It was the wrong look, you know, yeah. that was brought in, but <laughs> but I just loved that term, and it, you threw it. Put me right back into that Sacramento club wear. Club wear. It's a thing. Oh, I lost my thoughts. Okay, so Man, Noob Gaming says, I have a request. Can you make the arc reactor? Okay. You know, I haven't made an actual legit, no, I guess I have. I did the Infinity Gauntlet, but I really haven't made an actual legit Iron Man prop yet. It's a possibility. It is a possibility. I know the arc reactor was one that DIY Prop Shop did, so coming off of DIY Prop Shop, I didn't want to do it immediately. But then it kind of being, became habit to not do it. <laughs> yeah, new gaming wants the Iron Man one. Huh. I bet uh, Ironheart might be neat when they come out with that. Ironheart might be neat, yeah. It'd be really fun to keep doing all the different Iron Man offshoots that aren't actually Iron Man just to make everybody angry. Because <laughs> aren't they asking for Iron Man? Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there might even be a Marvel Zombies Iron Man in the What If series. I know we've seen the Marvel Zombies uh, Captain yeah, America. Yeah. I'm, talk I'm talking to one of my Patreon members off camera. Yeah. We have guests. We have guests. Yeah, just off camera. We have guests. We have guests. Odin singing. We have Odin singing and everyone's leaving the live stream. <laughs> um, Mary Burr... Bernie, Bernard? Bernitez says you should make up Iron Man full suit. <laughs> That's been requested a few times. Um, Detlef P says I have an unfinished Thor's hammer on the shelf for two years now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. It's like how long do you stare at it before it bothers you enough to pick it back up and finish? Exactly. Or do you just move it out of your sight? In which case, the project is really kind of dead. <laughs> or you find new inspiration of somewhere you want to bring it. Yeah, that helps. Uh, sometimes you can get a project done by changing it into something humorous, like wrapping your Thor's hammer with chicken big nugget boxes. And now you've got the McHammer. Mm -hmm. Or smashing it. Or smashing it, yeah. There you go. Yeah, throw it off the roof. <laughs> um, 
They want the Mark One, the one that actually looks like iron. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh. Holy, Holly Stutchman says, Felicia, have you ever thought of doing a Gamora Nebula Catwoman cosplay? I have done Catwoman. Um, I have thought about the Nebula and Gamora. I like Gamora better than Nebula, but I wouldn't be opposed to either. But I'm just picturing all mashed together in like the worst Super <laughs> Scroll mashup type of thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really more like, where am I going? What am I dressing up for for that right. party? Because Catwoman's really comfortable to go to like... Catwoman's probably be one of the easiest because you're not painting yourself in any way. No, it's completely comfortable. And then yeah. I love going out decked in ice. Like I just looted a um, diamond store, you know, all the rhinestones. Right. And with like just covered, you know, with the pearls. <laughs> like right. I just robbed somebody. And that's my favorite way to go out as Catwoman. With all the bling. <laughs> so. Um, it all depends on the party, honestly, where yeah. I'm going. Totally, I get that. Yes. Um, and wigs are hot and itchy, so yeah. I avoid them if I can. And paint, like body paint, I've done it. I like, I've done like, um, the Wicked Witch of the West where I was all green one year. That was fun because I used green blush as blush. It was really cool. Okay. Um, I like using professional face paints on those because they actually like stick to your skin and don't just yes. get everywhere that you touch. But, um. I don't know. Body yeah, paint I, doesn't bother me as much as wigs do. Yeah, okay. I've got a friend that uh, will actually take a fake beard and glue it on over his real beard. And that impresses a snot out of me. <laughs> I mean, I can see how maybe it's not that big of a deal because you're not gluing all that fake beard to your skin. You could but, totally blend But you've it. already got the bulge and then to take like a, an inexpensive beard and glue it on over, it's just amazing. And it looked fine. Anthony hated beards because all the glue. Yeah, it's weird because you get the you do all the spirit gum around around your mouth, which is one of the more flexible parts of your body, and now it's not flexible at all, and you start looking like Princess Leia from the end of Rogue One, and your <laughs> mouth barely moves at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Not that Princess Leia had a beard; it was just more the mouth movement. I can see a beard be over a beard being more comfortable, like extensions, because I'd rather do extensions than a full wig, because yeah. there's breathability. Right. Where if it's directly on your skin and there's no hair or anything, then it's glued to your face and that doesn't breathe, and you sweat and it's uncomfortable to wear for longer than a few hours at a time. Yes. Just from personal experience, beard wearing, you know. Right. So. Odin. Have you ever thought of making the armor of Odin? This is what Husk is asking. Yes, yes I have. Uh, I have thought, I've made uh, Gungnir, Odin's spear. I have thought about, I really like Odin's armor from Thor of the Dark World, which is one of the few things I can say I like about Thor of the Dark World. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. I thought that I haven't seen it yet. It was the second one. It's it the, second the second Thor movie, and it was fine. It just, it's not a top tier Marvel movie. It, and what's funny is it has things that were actually really important for the remainder of the story arc. There's stuff that happens in it, but you kind of have to chew through it. <laughs> uh, yes, I would totally be down for making Odin's armor. I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I've talked about building it with some friends. I've got uh, a friend, the Starflower. Uh, she lives down in the Bay Area. She is has said more than once that she's willing to do most of the sewing for that outfit. So, um, yeah, that's, that, that is a, uh, very much a possibility. I'm going to a bunch of cons, so I'm not probably doing any kind of Odin props this year. Because I know I, I made the Odin spear on, on Odin's birthday. You know, my birthday. Last year. I think it was just last year. Yeah. Anyway. Awesome. Yeah. Time. Time. <laughs> is there enough time for all the props that need to be built? No. <laughs> Never. Uh... Jen, Jenry Crows says, Felicia, you should make, I can't pronounce her names. I should, costume from Star Wars. I don't want to miss say anything. Oh, Ahsoka. Ahsoka. Ahsoka Tano, yeah. Yeah. That's the, That's uh, the Anakin's Padawan, the one with the, the white. Uh, yeah. Liku. 
Yeah. Yeah. Head thingies. Head thingies. <laughs> I helped a lady at the costume shop make the dancer with the head thingies from... Right, from Jabba's Palace. So that yeah. was... Oh. The Rod the Rodean is Grietta. Uh, I don't remember what the Tweedleek's name is. Yeah. But yeah. I helped somebody make that outfit, and that was really fun because right. we used an actual vintage... Um, like the leather helmets that they oh. would have used in the real Star Wars. Okay. We found the right one, which was like one of those like. <gasps> this is it. Moments. We put the tentacles on this. And the look in James' eyes when he realized that they were going to cut it up <laughs> to turn it into a cop. You know, like. Uh huh. Yeah. There's there's been a lot of people who's had that reaction to tearing up vintage stuff because that's what they use in the 70s in Star Wars where you can walk into a thrift store and find them for a dime. Right. 40 years later, you can't do that because everyone's walked into the thrift store and bought them for a dime. <laughs> I realized that I tell people, oh, you can find neoprene at a thrift store. No, I realize we can find neoprene at a thrift store because we live Because yeah. right in a spot where there's people who do these water sports. Right. But they don't... It, but right here is not necessarily so a lot of the stuff ends up at the thrift store for really cheap because it does, the people who buy it at the thrift store aren't going jet skiing yeah. on the weekends, you know, kind of a thing. So I find it really cheap at the thrift store all the time, but that's because of geographically, I think, where we're located more than anything else. Right. But I still use it and I like that I have access. Yeah, no, neoprene's a great, great material. Um, you know, mouse pads are a very similar type of neoprene. Yeah. Is this not what we wanted to do? No, I was just, before we cut, I mm -hmm. wanted to add just a little extra so we could overlap it at the center front. Okay. Just to, because that's going to be jointed, and I'd rather it overlap right at that joint. Sure. Because that's going to be its weakest spot. <laughs> you are the weakest link. Especially since the, 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 this, what the foam is going to be is seamed right there, too. Okay. Um... Moon Eyes 2K, so many things to make, so little time to make them. That's right. That is definitely an issue. Um, the inspiration and the desire greatly uh, exceeds the wallet and the calendar. <laughs> Loading 7041. Seeing you guys making props really gets me fired up. I'm So I'm currently making a hybrid Loki crown. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, craft along with us. It's fun to craft with friends, and I feel like having this on in the background helps things go a little bit faster. Totally, yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, head tails, technical term for, how do you say her names again? Uh, ah Ahsoka? Ahsoka. I just yeah. don't want to mess it up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're head tails. I'm pretty sure, aren't those Liku? Uh, that's not uh, L E K U. I think is what I re read about like Wikipedia. That's not what the Twi'lek have. Their their head tails have a different name, but I'm pretty sure Ahsoka's race. And there's also Shang T Shock T. What's what's the Jedi? I can't remember her name. Same same. Where they're more vertical and 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 not just tentacles. But they're not tentacles. They're head tails. tails. They're head tails. You got piggy tails, you got ponytails, and you, you got, got duck head tails, tails, and you got head tails. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Just pick George one. Is set, it moved. Oh, I that picked would, one. that'll do it. <laughs> and then it moved too, so I had to. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Thank you guys for commenting. It gives us stuff totally. to read. Totally. I'm, I'm really happy with how active the chat is today. It's very cool, guys. Yes. Um, okay, where was I? Sorry. <laughs> um, George says, Odin, what's your opinion on the Masters of the Universe so far? I haven't watched it yet, Some people, but some people are already talking bad about it. I was, I doubt it's bad as they say. Right. Um, honestly, I haven't watched it yet either. While I did watch a lot of the Masters of the Universe when I was younger, and I had a lot of fun making the props, I haven't watched the show. I'm not sure if I will anytime real soon. Um, I have heard that a lot of people are angry about it, but come on, have you seen the 80s show? <laughs> it, it, it was so episodical that nothing ever carried over, and, and, and it was a zero consequence show, right? You know, stuff would blow up and people would be captured, and then in the next episode, everyone's fine. So, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's a very faithful uh, re reproduction of the original show. <laughs> I also feel like it's sort of like the school's meatloaf, you know? Yeah. When you have expectations for it to be somewhat decent, it's very disappointing. 
But when you expect it to be terrible and you've been playing at recess all day and you come in and you know what? This meatloaf's pretty good, you know? Right. But it's the same shitty meatloaf. It's the same shitty, exactly. <laughs> hey, well, you know, this doesn't suck. <laughs> so sometimes your perspective before you get to it helps. Expectations is everything. I watched The Tomorrow War on Friday and um, I knew what I was getting into. I knew that this was a train wreck of a movie. Uh, but I went into a movie... To, to quote myself from earlier, just expecting to watch Godzilla stop the city. I wasn't disappointed. I enjoyed the movie. It was fun and stupid, and I didn't think about it. I just let it do its thing, and it was fine. If you want a movie that's going to, you know... Yeah, if you want a movie that's got substance to it, yeah, no, 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 don't, don't. <laughs> don't. It breaks its own rules. It, it doesn't follow its own mythos. It, it, it creates paradoxes, and when it's spent time in the beginning trying to set up how it can have paradoxes, yeah, no, it's, it's, don't. It makes your head hurt. But if you just shut up and watch them, you know, attack a, uh, a displacer beast, an albino displacer beast from AD&D, then it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Expectations. Expectations are everything. The best way to see movies is to go in completely blind. Yes. You know, as far as what, what it is, no, it's better when you actually see the movie. I kind of said that wrong, but to have zero expectations. Yeah. Toxic Menace, I was talking about this the other day, um, okay. says, It's funny because for a character like Peter Parker to be able to make a costume like the one in the Rami movies, you need skill on your level rather than a high school or teenager. Yep. I was talking to Odin about this because I was thinking, what if Spider-Man, how would Spider-Man have made his own outfit? Where is he sourcing his materials from? Does he have a sewing machine? Is he getting into Aunt May's thing? And so I was doing a yeah. lot of research on that, going, how would a teenage boy make um, this costume? I found a lot of really good... You came up with a lot of really good stuff. And the yeah. big one for me, in the comics, uh, so the Raimi films... The, the web is is uh, a mutation and part of Parker, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the comics, no. He's just a chemical genius that figured it out because he needed it. Yeah. Because inspiration. So. <laughs> I love that he hates to sew and he complains about it in the yeah. comics. And it makes me... I yeah. feel him so much. Like, the reason I sew is because I want the thing and I need it to... And I gotta make it myself. Like he's sitting there complaining, like I just did this really big deal, and I'm sitting here sewing my own. Right. And in almost every comic, he's doing his suit with needle and thread, sitting on his bed, <laughs> all by hand. All by hand. <laughs> complaining the whole time, and I love it. <laughs> so, yes, I've thought about that. Like, and I think the movies have done a pretty good job because most of the time, when Parker's first costume comes out in the movies it's you know a red hoodie with welding goggles and it's you know cut off gloves and it's spray painted and but as he gets more and more into it how does how do they explain that um with the mcu it was great because stark gave him a better suit yeah I with know. with uh Raimi's and the amazing spider-man it was a leap of faith yeah it was like oh and the movie needs to move on to the next bit <laughs> he got himself a costume designer at this point yep Um, Gro Gr Grusin says, I think Spider-Man did his sewing in sewing class in school. <laughs> they had home Classical. at that then. Oh, they, they did, yeah. Yeah, he also would do it overnight, like, in his bedroom in the comics. I yeah, think. yeah, the comics are great, and it was just like kind of, Batman does it a little better, but, you know, you get these superheroes that are, that are doing their thing all night, and then they have a day job they go to, they never sleep. So one of the things that gets apparently superpower is insomnia, or insomnia is a superpower, or one of those things. <laughs> well, how is that a like you get super cranky because you haven't gotten right. enough sleep? <laughs> like, because I know if I haven't gotten enough sleep, I'm pretty cranky pretty myself. Cranky, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Sean Kennedy says, same reason I love Green Lantern. You just shut up and let yourself enjoy it. <laughs> yep. I have not seen Green Lantern yet. Uh, but I, I can I can totally get that that is the way to enjoy that movie. Yes. Uh, Nolan Film says that was until Tony gave him a somewhat robotic suit. We talked about that. Right. Taylor Tales 27 says, I love your shirt. Thank you. I'm really happy with the shirt. And Gary... Zoros, sorry, I keep saying your name wrong every time I say it, says, 
Um, and what we hate to make or so? Gloves. Yes. Yes. And then Thomas Hughes TV says, you said you watched classic Doctor Who. Could you make Omega's helmet? Wow, I have to look at Omega's helmet again. I'm sure I could. Maybe. Um, Bosk's outfit is in some of the classic Doctor Who episodes. I think some of the Troughton episodes had, uh, because it was a uh, high altitude RA RAF uniform, if I remember right. So the, the suit that Bosk is wearing in Empire Strikes Back, almost literally to the same threads, was in Doctor Who episodes. So, maybe. Maybe. You guys watch enough of the Doctor Who episode that you did do. Get yeah. those numbers up. Get those numbers up, you did. Yeah, exactly. Um, artist in Training says, Actually, there's a YouTuber who made a Spider-Man costume under $100 and was around the same age, too. Godzilla yeah. Mendoza is the name of him. He's done it a few times, and each time it looks great. I can imagine, because totally. Peter Piper probably made it the first time, figured out all his mistakes. You know what? I don't... He yeah. complains about his suit getting wet and not being able to get it on in the comics, and I could see that being an issue that he runs in with the fabrics of the time that he solves with the fabrics, different fabrics from the time. Absolutely. Just really interesting way to think about it. And I do believe that teenage boys can sew. <laughs> yeah. Know? I could figure it out. You could figure it out. You know? <laughs> right. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um... Man with a plan. I think the first Amazing Spider-Man did an okay at plausible suit that Peter Parker could have made. So. Okay. Plausible. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Mythbusters <Yep>. vibes. Yeah. <laughs> plausible. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm doing one of the things I talk about I don't like doing in the show, uh, in, in my normal weekly show, and that is I'm cutting out all the parts very exact to begin with, and then we're going to glue them together and they're not going to line up, which means we're going to have to sit here with a Dremel and clean the edges up, and I apologize for that. <laughs> I kind of got about halfway through because I'm just, I'm going through the motions, doing the thing, it's like, oh, wait, I should have left one a little big and, or, you know, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I assumed you knew what you're doing and... I didn't have to cut them out, so. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, that's great. No, this is good. I like this. I like this trade-off where you're you're doing something and then and then we switch and I'm doing something and you're able to talk to the people. Yep. Got the pattern down and now we got the pieces cut out and then we're going mm -hmm. to glue them together. How are we going to glue them? With glue. Super glue. Uh, well, contact I, I, cement. Yeah, I'm, I'm such a contact cement guy. You want contact cement? Will it work with the metal? It, uh, we might need to scratch the metal up a little bit to give it a better tooth. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it should work fine. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Reagan Fisher says, Odin, I have an idea for a large build. A yes. one-to-one -one replica of the TARDIS exterior. At least it's the exterior. You can make Joe's little room look like the TARDIS. Talked about it. <laughs> totally talked about that, making making the door. Even though it's um, it's the wrong type of door, but it, whatever. You know, just make it look like the TARDIS door, but the whole panel just opens up incorrectly. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually talked about doing that to the front of the whole studio, too. Yeah. But you got that sign for Snoop Dogg's house out there. Well, gotta it's an that. old smosh yeah. prop. It's one of the first Smosh props I did. I remember Taryn loved it. <laughs> she had it on the outside of her office. <laughs> yeah, for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Did you ever end up with the montage machine? No. Okay, no, I like that, that. that. That went to L.A., I think. That's awesome. Yeah, Myra didn't get it either. Aww. Yeah. So... We are getting towards the end of our stream, and we have all of that. our pieces cut out, but we will have to glue it together. I think we'll be gluing it, doing some well, gluing next week, yeah. We could probably get it started glue. Yeah. Well, I'm going to grab heater tape in just a minute, and I'm going to make sure the, the aluminum pieces are connected. The aluminum foil tape? Yeah, the aluminum it's foil tape. It's called heater tape? It's, I call it heater tape. But yeah, it's, it's, it is another form of duct tape. It's the one, one of the truer duct tapes because... Uh, for it's, duct work. It's for duct work, and it is able to handle the heat. Is so. there going to be heat? No, that's just the way the tape's made. 
I don't know. Wonder I'm missing and a it's piece. Like, yeah. I didn't cut. I didn't cut one of the pieces out. I didn't trace one of the uh, one of the other. That's all right. It'll, it'll, it, it'll fit. I might have to cut this and flatten it first, but it'll fit. Okay. We're cutting all in the pieces. Mm -hmm. We're cutting edge show. y'all. Good night. Good night. Jerry. Thanks for hanging out. Yes. They're in Ireland? They're in Ireland. Ireland They're the yeah. ones that sent us the tea and biscuits yeah. last week. Yeah. I'm excited for our tea party with that. Yeah. I do like the Irish tea. I forgot if I've had boxes of Irish breakfast tea before. It's one of the ones I like because it's a more robust tea. Robust tea. Um, Sean Park says, Cara! Cara! <laughs> you have a comment? You have a comment? Quick answer Kara's comment before before she checks out. <laughs> it's the one that says Kara. <laughs> oh, I'm trying. Yes, you are. You're doing fine. <laughs> Sean Kennedy says the gray tape we called duct tape was originally called duck tape because it was made with duck fabric invented by a woman. Oh, okay. Duck. Duck. Yeah. So duct tape because it was duck cloth, duck fabric. Duck All right. Cloth. Very cool. Hmm. Interesting. I like yeah. tape. It's one of my more favorite craft supplies. Um, Gru Grusin says, Felicia, that dress looks great on you. Thank you, guys. Um... Sean Kennedy, woodworking for mere mortals on YouTube, did a life-size wood TARDIS that can be put up and taken down in 10 minutes with a few tools. It's amazing. That's awesome. So my friend, uh, Kirk, uh, uh, oh man, Kirkland. Wow, brain, apparently it's lunchtime, brain's checked out. Max Kirkland from the Dallas Makerspace was letting me know that last year they got a uh, CNC router cutting machine that can take a full sheet of plywood and so he's able to flop down a single piece of plywood and see and see out most of the panels for one side of the TARDIS in like 10 minutes. <laughs> I love having the right tools for right. a job that make it like so much easier than struggling. Uh-huh. It's like having nice sharp scissors to cut out fabric uh -huh. as opposed to struggling with the things. Safety scissors, yeah. Yes. Or having, you know, it's a lot of work to 3D print in the pre-print. Yes. Making sure it stays together and going out. So, I don't know. I do like new technology. I'm not going to lie. Uh, who, got, who are you talking to? We have a live studio audience. We have live studio audiences. Yes, please. That'd be oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes. Even the John's <laughs> here. John the mailman will be delivering us water in just a minute. Uh, but no, there's we've got friends here. There's a couple of Patreon members, Kara Skywalker and Jay Period, are here in the studio. They're working on a Lady Loki outfit, and, as well as another friend who's working on a um, Bo-Katan outfit. So uh, yeah, we've got we've actually got four different guests here. In addition to Ellis, who's upstairs editing, uh, Joe, who's running around doing whatever it is that Joe does when I'm not paying attention to him, and uh, and then John Christensen, who'll be bringing us water. So, so kind of got a full house. Yeah. More brought to you live in front of a global audience and a live studio audience yeah. this week. Which, which, by the way, uh, the building is a bit larger than what you typically see. This isn't just my garage. I'm, we're, we're in the shop in the back of an actual studio in Sacramento, the, the Sacramento Media Center. Uh, SacramentoMediaCenter.com. And, um, yeah, so uh, there's there going to be quite a few people here. Yeah, and if you want a tour of the Media Center, we kind of take you through it on the... On last year's Halloween live stream. Yeah. So. Because the time change happened on Halloween night. So we had a double midnight special. I yeah. Know. We had fun. Um, let's see. We got Sean Karg with a $20 super chat saying, Duct Tape Coffee, the official beverage of Odin Makes Channel. Duct Tape Coffee, it's snowboardingly great. It's snowboardingly great. <laughs> 
Sean, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, they're worried about you getting cut, so don't slice yourself. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I am using um, kind of serrated scissors, which gives us a bit of a serration to the edge of the, of the so that is a possibility. Um, it's not as sharp as you'd think. But, but I've yes. also got I've got callous fingers a little bit too. It, but that is totally a possibility. <laughs> if paper can cut you, I can imagine this no, wouldn't feel totally any better. Would. Yeah. Oh no, this would this would suck to get cut by. <laughs> Let's not beat around that bush. <laughs> Fox Armor says, speaking of sharp scissors, my dad had me cut up some fabric a few days ago to fill in his punching bag, and it was so much fabric, I feel like they were old, so they got dull like halfway through. Yeah. Cut aluminum foil. Right. Unless they're titanium, and then don't cut aluminum foil. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Thing. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are live. But, um, punches. Yeah. Blades that you really can't easily sharpen. Um, Cut aluminum foil, like fold it up into... Your wit. You can sharpen your wit by cutting aluminum foil. Your what? Your wit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently I'm not that sharp. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Cutting cardboard is going to dull the crap out of your scissors really yeah. quick. Yeah, EVA foam does too. Yeah, I highly recommend um, titanium scissors because they really do kind of get the abuse... Like they can take it they can take and the still abuse. cut satins afterwards, but I do not recommend sharpening those on aluminum foil because it'll take the titanium finish off of your scissors and then they will not cut anything anymore. Are those titanium? Yeah. yeah. But they're also serrated. So. And they're not your fabric scissors. No, these aren't my fabric scissors. These yeah. are just scissors. <laughs> no, at the costume shop, we, the titanium ones were the only ones that we could go from cardboard to satin back and forth, and we loved them. Right. And I can see satin, satin runs in a hurry, so I can see satin being a real pain. And, and oh, why yes. is your benchmark for sharp scissors? Yes. <laughs> if it Scissors cutting satin is not the easiest thing because it's so lightweight, flowy, and it just bends as opposed to <laughs> cuts. It's, right. It just... There's a reason that people like protect their fabric scissors with their lives because it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow. People are talking a little faster than I can read. <laughs> oh, okay, that's all right. Hey guys, thank you so much for 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 being active in the channel for for. Uh, interacting with us for watching me cut up a pie plate for for being here for for crafting so even though we say things like wow it's hard to keep up that's actually a compliment to, to you so uh, thank you uh, a big part and a big fun factor for the live streams for both of us is the interaction with you it's it's almost crafting is almost secondary it is actually kind of secondary the, because um, getting to talk to everyone, especially getting to talk to people worldwide. That is flattering, probably beyond what you might think. Um, so thank you all for tuning in and thank you for watching. I'm not signing off. I'm just being excited about the activity in the chat. Yeah, we're getting near to our sign off time. We are. But we've gotten about as far as I thought we would get. Okay. Honestly. Well, I thought we might have gotten it glued together. Yeah, I thought we, I thought we might have gotten a little farther, but you know, we had some we had some side quests and we had some uh, special guests here in the studio with us today. Yeah. That uh, that were appearing during the Patreon only. Uh, for those of you who are still sticking with us at this point, we do start live streaming every week at noon, but at about eleven fifteen, we start doing a Patreon only portion of the live stream. Uh, the live stream is just unlisted, and, and, and members of my Patreon, members of my Discord are able to sign in and watch, and the audience is a lot smaller, and it's a lot easier to see what everyone's talking about. And you all get to see it later played back, but if you want to be part of the, the live chat when it's uh, dozens of people instead of hundreds of people, then uh, definitely check out uh, Odin Makes on, on Patreon and figure out how to get your own link to the Discord. Yes. It's definitely fun there. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Corey says, never compromise the fabric scissors. My late wife taught me that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Sean Kennedy also, Sean, we have a Sean Corey and a Sean Kennedy in 
Yep. Yes, yes. we do. <laughs> so, I've noticed. Adam Savage once said that papers are made with binder glue that is used to dull metal so it kills scissors. <laughs> yes. The binding glue that is put in, 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 in the binder paper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Paper yep. scissors are not going to cut fabric. They dull yeah. really quick. But I just buy a whole bunch of dollar store scissors and I keep those readily available so that nobody knows that the fabric scissors exist. Right. <laughs> and for yeah. many years I had the solid chrome ganger scissors and those are my fabric scissors. But I let them go for decades without getting sharpened. So at this point they're really kind of worthless. And um, I was never worried about it because for the longest time the local uh, fabric stores would have a guy come by to sharpen scissors that was either free or uh, so affordable I wasn't worried about it. But times changed, those fabric stores closed, and now I have to send the scissors in to Ganger to get them sharpened. And it's almost cheaper to just buy a new pair. So that's, yep. not, that's not cool. I don't, I don't, I'm not big on the disposable portion of that. <laughs> right. I've had my same fabric scissors. Jeez, I got them in 2009. Okay. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, there. Had them for a while and I've never gotten them sharpened, but I also don't bring them out unless I need them. You know, there it's like, I need this to work. Right. And. Right, they're, yeah. they're, they're not your go-to fabric scissors. They no. are your, these are the ones I'm gonna use fabric scissors. Yeah, okay. my gingers I keep kind of in the back where I never bring them on set. Don't bring them around other people. Never bring them around other people. <laughs> As far as anyone's concerned, they do not exist, <laughs> but I have so many pairs of scissors that, whatever. Yeah. Um, John Clark says, I always heard cut sandpaper to sharpen old scissors. Ew, That's I can't, interesting. that just sounds so painful, please don't. Like, yeah. it might work, but. It might work, but. Yeah. If it's old scissors. Nails on a chalkboard. Just not, not a whole lot to lose there. <laughs> right? You're cutting a bunch of cardboard. Uh, some sandpaper in between might really help you get through that project. And then those scissors are trash. Don't use your nice scissors. <laughs> um, we got a $5 super chat from Loki Bo Desada 6. Sweet. Sorry, Thank I butchered you. your name. Lo Desada or Loki? Yeah. She's, she's pointing it out with my glasses on, so what I see is a black blurry splotch on aqua. <laughs> L-O-K-D-E-S-A-A-D-6. Okay. Lokdesad. Okay, Lokadesis, all right. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for the super chat. Is there a question involved? He says, or they say. They say. I like your Cookie Monster Godzilla mashup t-shirt. Any plans to make a snake eye mask? Um, you know, I haven't said... No, not at the moment. Uh, because I'm getting crunched to get my Mecha Godzilla cosplay done for cons that are coming up, I'm going to be kind of focusing a lot on that. And the next couple videos are going to be Mecha Godzilla and updating the Gundam suit. Because finally, the Gundam cosplay that was done a year ago is going to be able to go to an actual big con. So that, that's, that's the next couple of weeks of videos. Fun. Yeah. Even though Snake Eye Summit would be kind of fun. Right. And, and, um, even though the trailer does show the completely snowboarding BS thing where he clicks a button and it just grows out of nothing and closes over his face because... CGI? Mass doesn't exist? I, I don't know. Yeah, CGI. Clipping, it's not a thing. Stephen Dyke G says, I hate finding my fabric scissors out on my bench when I know I haven't. You're right. No, that you know? no fabric hasn't been cut. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, totally hear out, that. Go out and get fabric scissors because we were cutting stuff and it, it wasn't working and we it needed. Was, yeah. It was difficult. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a cute euphemism for it. <laughs> it was difficult. <laughs> right? <laughs> So you got new scissors. So I got new scissors. And then they weren't labeled, so people didn't know they were fabric scissors. And if you don't label them as fabric scissors, people can't be in trouble for using them. Because they don't know, so I labeled your fabric scissors. So the, the, the people who didn't know were the people that told me I needed to get fabric scissors and grab the particular ones off the shelf and get ones like these. <laughs> 
but but no, she's totally right, and you need to label them. You know, yes. So, so other people know. So you're not coming up to your workbench and finding your fabric scissors, which is just used to cut up an aluminum can because it looked like fun. My brother once wanted to cut the screen door fabric, and he didn't understand why I wouldn't let him use my fabric scissors. I told him absolutely right. not, and he's like, but those are the only ones that will cut it. And I'm like, because I say absolutely no. Right, because <laughs> why they it'll be the last thing they cut, too. <laughs> right? Ooh, that is a cool one. Thomas Hughes TV says, ooh, could you make the Men in Black neuro Neuralizer prop from MIB franchise? That is cool. Uh, I made one on DIY Prop Shop, actually. I found a really cool um, toothbrush case from Japan and used that. And uh, the the spring-loaded uh, toilet paper holders for rollers. Yeah, no, I, I made one on DIY Prop Shop. You're welcome. Go look it up. Yeah. Not on my channel, so I'm telling you to go somewhere else and look, which is not the... That's, that's but not But it's smart. still you. But it's still me. I yeah, still made it. it's your brand. You did yeah. it. You made it. You can make another one. I could. Then it'd be yours. Yeah. So. <laughs> Rolf, R-O-F, says, would you ever make an Iron Man or Captain America helmet? Uh, I need to, yeah. I've, I've heard of a lot, a lot of people have asked for Captain America helmets, and apparently there isn't a really good tutorial, so yet. I'm not yet. And I've taken pictures. I've looked at Captain America helmets, um, and um, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. But that's definitely one of those eventually things. It reminds me of that one that I stole from you to make Action Man. Yes, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was one I made for Beyond Geek. That was yeah. actually done. Uh, I sculpted and cast out of fiberglass. Yeah. That one was really good. Thank you. It was good enough that Daredevil Two, which came out considerably after Beyond Geek. Um, Man, it looked, sure did look like they copied it. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't. They just reasoned through the same things I reasoned through, but it's a lot of fun to think they copied it. <laughs> yes. Um, Steven Daichi says, my different scissors are labeled. Well, then whoever used them, they have no excuse, and you can be mad. I give you permission. <laughs> yeah, fully. Um, Aaron David says, hey. Hey. Aaron hey. David. hey, Aaron David. Um, so did the E3 tra Did the E3 trailer? Sorry, I realized. Niall McCarthy wants to know, did okay. any did any of the E3 trailers get you in the mood for any video game props? Can't wait for Halo Infinite. Yes. Uh, my I didn't see all the trailers, but easily, and it had some fantastic art. My favorite E3 trailer I saw was Outer Worlds 2. That's what it was. It's not Other Worlds, right? It's Outer Worlds. Jay doesn't quite remember either. It was a totally sarcastic, tongue-in-cheek trailer. It's a real game coming out, and uh, the voice, the voiceover guy is saying, in a universe where um, he's just saying what's happening on screen. And then we see a great star in the sky. What's it called? We don't know. We haven't written that part of the game yet. And then the antagonist walks onto the screen. Or is it the hero? We're not really sure. And oh, look, an awesome beast that may not even appear in the show in the game because we're not done with it yet. And that was the whole trailer. It was great. <laughs> it was one of the most honest E3 trailers ever. <laughs> and it was really, really, really good art. <laughs> I feel like that really does give you an opportunity to get some feedback before you fully commit to because yeah. you introduce things and people will be like, well, that looks like it's stupid or go, yes, I want more. Or, Can we name it Fluffy? Exactly. Uh, what is it, Marvel? So, the TVA logo for Marvel's Loki. Mm -hmm. uh, the very stylized logo. Um, there was a fan theory that popped up about how the TVA logo, if you rotate it, it says V-A-L. It's Val, who is the uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus character at the end of like Black Widow and, and some of the other things. Totally not an intentional thing on the MCU's part, but they're actually toying with the idea of adopting it. <laughs> I like it when they take the fan, yeah. fan theories and go that's a good idea <laughs> mm -hmm. so Odin what are we doing today and where are we at and where are we leaving off uh, I'm currently trying to put your W together so you've got a center piece so it's going to be like double thick of the aluminum uh, where are we at today I was trying what we did is we're, we decided that the the winner was the W, so we're doing uh, the Wonder Woman with the W for for the for the for her top. 
Uh, we took your dress form. We found a, uh, a leather bodice top. That was uh, what we wanted to use as a base. Hours at vinyl. Whichever. We have a couple different tops. We just threw one on the dress form. Right. So I'm, we I'm had a reference this point. One, but, yeah. Um, pulled off our pattern from, from a printout and uh, making our, our foam parts. So next week, we're actually going to be able to start gluing things together and hopefully finish a top uh, in one, one, one live stream. Thought it would take two. Yeah, I kind of thought it would take two too. So I'm not, I'm not too surprised. Yeah. No, we also had uh, some some special guests and some friends drop by, which is really cool. Uh, so never going to be complaining about that. Even though one sitting here in the room, it's not that I'm trying to cover for it. I mean, I, I straight up said, hey, if you're going to come down and pick up the fabric, do it on Sunday, and you can pop on the live stream and say hi. So yes. you know, they showed up, popped on the live stream, and said hi. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> very entertaining. I'm not complaining. Yeah. But we got a W started. We got a W started. We got it cut out of... We have a W for Wanda. WW World Wildlife Foundation. No. Yes. Um, WWF Smackdown with an angry panda. <laughs> there you go. So we have one layer of what the foam. We right. have one layer of cake pan. <laughs> yep, aluminum cake pan. And one layer of craft foam. Uh, HD or foam. I actually use HD foam. HD foam. Mm -hmm. So why do we have all of these layers? We have all the different layers of stuff because um, we're trying to utilize the different properties of the different stuff. Using a foam skin will give it the same textured look as everything else that's made out of foam, as well as it's an easy material to conform to, to compound curves. Uh, the aluminum foil, we're, the, the heavy grade aluminum, we're using as a, a structural piece. So the foam isn't as want to go back to its flat state. Uh, and then the different, the different foam, different thicknesses of the foams, the what the foam is, what most of the others are. So we've got that as the, it's the robust one. I'm, I'm actually saying it backwards. This is what I was thinking was going to happen. It's not what actually happened. Uh, it's the robust one. It, the, the what the foam is actually has like a high rubber content. You, could, you can sew with it and turn it into functional straps. Uh, HD foam is is an, a most excellent high density foam with a high density uh, micro bubble structure that's really good for carving and getting your surfaces. That's what I use for making Skeletor staff. So it's just utilizing the different properties within the ice cream sandwich to make the best dessert we can. Yes. And we're using the aluminum foil as an inner lining. Um, the foam is a lining and yep, this plus this plus this equals the yep. shape and thing that we need. So this week we got it all cut out. Next week we should get it all glued together and yep. painted. And painted, yes. So it's just past two o'clock. I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in and stuck with us to this point. We're almost a full three hours of crafting again. Remember, Patreons get early access and, and uh, um, not, not unique, uh, a, a bit of a private one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, live stream that the rest of you can enjoy in playback. But if you want to be part of the Cool Kids Club, definitely check out patreon.com slash odinmix. And... Um, yeah, the, it gets you as there are levels of Odin makes to get you uh, access to the Discord server, which includes uh, playing Among Us on Fridays. I'm on that every Friday, so you get a chance to murder Odin on every Friday. And we are starting up a Minecraft server, so um, all that stuff to look forward to. Yes. But yeah, you've got a new video coming out. Not tomorrow but next week right yeah the first week of august i was going to be coming out with a new video where i show you how i made this dress form right here and it cost me only 20 bucks to make so if you want to see that out see how i did that check out my video next month in august where can they find that video YouTube, yes. but we're, we're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own channel now, Behind the Scenes Fashions, and that's here on YouTube. And are you going to link it? or? Uh, I think it is linked, actually. It is linked. It is linked. It's, it's linked. Links, links right in the description. Brand new channel, not very many videos out yet, but I did make the Leia Poncho. That video is out there, and um, I show one of the projects that I was randomly working on. They're just like, right. I need to film this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The, the Cinderella skirt and then this video is coming out and slowly but surely 
So Felicia does appear every Sunday here with me in the live streams. Uh, and then for her channel, it's the first week of every month, a new video will be released. And that is that is your current schedule. Currently, yeah. yeah which is totally cool. Uh, quick reminder to anyone else who's still watching, there are three weeks coming up where we won't be live streaming from the studio. I'll be on the road doing a micro live stream, but I will definitely be t tuning in noonish uh, every Sunday just to say hi and let you see where I'm at and which con I'm at. Uh, but we've got a couple more weeks before that happens, and hopefully we can get through some Wonder Woman. And we'll warn you guys before that happens. Totally. Yes. But definitely, thank you all very much for tuning in with us. We're going to be live again next Sunday. Um, I know there's lots of different ways to fumble your way through saying goodnight and having no idea on exactly how to go about doing that. But this is how Odin is socially awkward. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> Trade sides. Now i got to go push the button. You know, the same button I didn't push in the beginning when nobody could hear us. Yeah, there yeah you go. that one. <laughs>